Hello, friends. I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. Um, <laughs> I had a little bit of a uh, of a situation there. I do not see anybody communicating with me. So, yeah, I don't see anybody here. So evidently, I am in the wrong place. Now, I see 25 people here now. So here we go. Okay. All right. Very sorry, y'all. I, I tried to go live and we couldn't understand what happened. And uh, I use all Macs and I was using um, Safari and uh, it uh, live stream on YouTube uh, will not work on Safari. <laughs> so now we know. So I had to download Chrome real quick, which is a Google product and get that going. And I see messages coming in like crazy. And so, um, forgive me, I cannot see a thing up close without my glasses, so we'll have to do that. Um, but uh, Trey Miller uh, will be moderating tonight, so if anything gets out of hand, he's going to go, and you're gone. So everybody try to keep it clean, try to keep it nice. I know that we have people from all around the world, so the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to, to pray with you guys. Uh, you know, I know we got this coronavirus thing going on. We've got a lot of stuff going on and it's worldwide for the most part. And I have my, my thoughts about what this is, but I, I don't want to make this a political forum by any stretch. I want this to be fun for all of us. So, uh, first, uh, I want you to know that Lori and I uh, pray together every morning and we pray for you guys every single day. Um, and some of you, we even know individually, we pray for you. And the messages are coming in so fast. Just give me just a moment and I will uh, start start taking them. Uh, so right now, let's pray together and, uh, and then we'll move forward. So Lord, I ask you to touch my friends and I thank you for the support and all the things that they've done to support us and in, in our efforts. But I also ask you to put a hedge of protection around them, uh, no matter where they're at in the world, on the globe. Uh, we have people from all over the world and I just ask you to touch them and and put a hedge of protection around them, keep them safe, bless them, uh, give them the support that they need, no matter what it might be, and just touch them and bless them and, and give them the, the, uh, uh, the love of Jesus. And I praise you for that today, Lord. And I ask you to touch each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, thank y'all so much for um, uh, being with me. And forgive me, I'm, I'm wearing glasses. I hate these glasses, but I, honestly, I can't see. Um, I can see that that you clearly can can hear me because I'm seeing some amens and I thank y'all so much for that. Um, and I just want you to know that, like I said, Lori and I pray for each and every one of you every single day. And I don't know a lot of you individually, um, but I, I we we do know know you individually and we don't. So I, I thank you for that. So what I'm going to start doing is. Um, trying to look at these uh, messages and answer. Uh, I was inspired to do this by Ashley Drew. She She's done it a couple of times and she did very well with it. It looked like a lot of fun. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I need to move into the 21st century and, and try to do something like this. So this is inspired by um, uh, Ashley. And Trey, you may need to go over to the other page. Somebody's saying that, I don't know if you can see this page or not. So anyway, um, we've got people from all over the world. I've seen uh, Toronto, Canada. I've seen South Carolina, which is not too far from me. I've seen Germany, uh, New York City, and New Jersey. Uh, it's it, incredible the support that we get for these videos. And look, I'm, I'm just honored. Um, somebody's telling me that I have another stream going and I don't know how to stop it. Trey, can you, do you know how to stop it? So if y'all will give me just a moment, I'm going to look. And I started a new stream evidently. Um, Somehow I've, I've got two streams going. I don't know what that is and I apologize. Guys, this is a, a learning curve for me. Uh, I'm being straight up. I honestly do not know what I'm doing here. So um, with these streams, so see live now. 
they look like the same stream. So I, I don't know what to do about that. Um, but the stream that you see me on is the correct one. Yeah, see, if I click the stop button on this one, I don't see the other one is the problem, y'all. I'm sorry. Somebody from Australia, Trey just told me he would get it handled. Thank you, Trey. Somebody from Ireland, Tucson, Arizona. I've been to Tucson. I went to old Tucson in about 1972 or 73. Uh, I was a, a kid, seven or eight years old. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So um, what do you guys want to talk about? I'm going to start watching this and see uh, what y'all want to talk about. There's somebody from Scotland, somebody from Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Seven, Seven Lakes, North Carolina. I don't know where that's at, and I am from North Carolina. It must be Western North Carolina. Um, Kansas, Oakville, Ontario. That's Stephen. I know you, Stephen. Hello, Stephen and Rose. Brazil. Wow. So you want to talk about Elvis. I see that. I had a dog named Elvis as well, Shane. It was a great Pyrenees, a big old white great Pyrenees. There's someone from Denmark. So we've got a representation from all over the world. Mark Hollingsworth, Greenville, North Carolina. My mother lives in Greenville, North Carolina. I visit there often. Julie Guy, Durham, North Carolina. I have family there. I know you know that. Kyle Slingo, hello. Boy, these things are flying by, y'all. Hey, Danny, the trucking channel. I remember that. I remember seeing your channel. Bonnie from North Carolina. UK, Elaine. Hello, Elaine. Leanne Brooks from Tennessee. Detroit. Rock City, the Mississippi Gulf. Is that Biloxi? You know, we did a lot of stuff in Biloxi, Wilmington, North Carolina, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Niagara, Canada. So I'm going to try to um, take questions um, so I don't bore you all with, I mean, I could read this, I guess, all night, but I want to take questions and do things that, that y'all are interested in talking about. So there's a barbershop on Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. They gave Elvis his military haircut and there's a museum. I plan on going there and filming. I've not made it there yet, um, but I do plan that. Uh, Strictly Elvis went there and, um, and was able to go there. So they were able to hook me up with the people. Someone asked, how did I get to work with Scotty Moore? Actually, two people asked that. Madrid, Spain. So that's a good question. So, so um, uh, the way that happened was, um, and Dean Nicopolis is trying to call me. Um, the way that happened was, uh, I had visited Graceland one time. So I'm on a, I know y'all are, I can't, I can't just can't look at them. I'm sorry. Uh, while I'm doing this, if y'all want to want to hang on, um, we were coming back from Graceland and somebody had mentioned, and this would have been 1990, I'm going to say 98. And I was driving back, headed back to North Carolina. I did not live in Nashville at the time. And somebody said, hey, you know, Scotty Moore has a tape duplication shop right off of Music Row. Back then, Demombrian Street was the George Jones Museum. And there was a lot of museums there. So that was kind of the only place in Nashville I knew about to go. And he was literally around the corner from that. So I went, walked in the place. Um, Scotty was not there. His what he called his personal secretary, which was really his girlfriend, uh, was was in there working. And she said, um, oh, thank you, Dean. Dean's trying to call me in the middle of the show. I may call you back, Dean. Um, and so you can, can talk to the fans. Um, but anyway, I went in there and talked to her. her. Name was Gail Pollock. And Gail, they had, I just wanted to see Scotty but they had a photo of Elvis and Scotty on the wall with the signature on it. And I was like, how much are they? And she told me how much they were. And I was like, well, I want Scotty to sign it though. And she said, okay, well give me your address and I'll get him to sign it and I'll just mail it to you. And, and so I gave her the money. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I got an autographed picture from Scotty to, to Billy, to my name. 
And so I thought, wow, this is something incredible. And about that time, uh, 99 was when eBay started. So I thought, or actually 98 was when eBay started. And I thought to myself, I bet uh, people all over the world would love to have a Scotty Moore autograph. And so I thought eBay is a great platform for that. So I called uh, Gail and had her have Scotty call me. And Scotty actually called me at my house in Goldsboro, North Carolina, where I lived at that time. And, you know, it's kind of surreal answering the phone and somebody that you've read about um, in all these history books and seeing the, uh, the photos of you're actually talking to on the phone. And I actually acted kind of like a fool to him. I know he was he was like, oh, come on, not one of those guys, because I, I, I kind of um, I, uh, I, I I fanned out on it. <laughs> Let's just say that. And. So we talked about me being able to buy autograph photos. And my question was, how many can I buy? And he said, well, how many do you want? And I said, I don't know, 10,000. And the, you know, that number was astronomical, but it was not, uh, not a stretch. I bought a few, what I would do is then is just buy them where it would say best wishes, Scotty Moore. And I would sell them on eBay. Then uh, fast forward another year, I moved to Nashville. I, uh, joined back up with Scotty where I could literally go to his house and sit in front of him and say, I need this one to say to Billy, my uh, the best guitar player I know, best wishes Scotty Moore. I need this one to say this. I need this one. So I would sit in front of him and get into autographs. So if you have an autograph picture, my time with Scotty would have been about 2000 to 2003 ish, somewhere in there. I would send certificate of authenticity. Um, so if you have an autograph photo or other autograph items with my certificate during that time frame, it came from me. I handled it. My stack of papers was about that deep of sales. So we sold a lot of stuff. And I didn't just sell autographs. I sold books. Uh, Scotty's book autographed. I sold personal items. He had a, uh, a guitar that had a, a Scotty Moore, uh, his name on it, on the pit guard that was custom built for him by uh, the custom shop at Gibson. He didn't like that being on um, uh, on his guitar. He didn't like his name being on it. So he actually took that off and replaced it with the regular pick guard. And I sold that pick guard to somebody. So somebody out there in the world has the Scotty Moore pick guard off of his one-off Gibson that he had made by Gibson to clone the guitar that Chet Atkins had a one-off of. Chet gave him a guitar. And he wanted that guitar to be cloned so he could play it out on the road. He didn't want to take Chet's guitar out on the road. So that's what that guitar was. So we sold a lot of things like that and just, you know, incredible stuff. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, for lack of a better word, I am honored that I got to spend that time with Scotty. I wish I knew what I know now. I would have asked a lot more questions than I did. I asked questions, but I didn't know that much. The internet was very, very new. So we were not able to learn quite as much as we can learn now. And I think Ashley may be in here. I see somebody saying, hey, Ashley. Hello, Ashley. This is inspired by you. You know that. Yep, I see Ashley right there. Hey, everyone, this is cool. It is cool, Ashley. I, I really struggle getting this thing going. And uh, Ashley is also moderating. She's in here as a moderator. I don't know if she knows she can do that, but she can. Um, so John Daly must be here. I'm seeing somebody say hello to him. And I'm just, I'm going to read, guys, these things are going by like lightning. There's 399 people in here right now. So they're going really, really fast. And I sincerely want to thank y'all for supporting all of us and watching these videos. As you know, it is a labor of love. It's something that we really, really, really enjoy. Um, some people may have seen uh, in here, well, uh, let me back up. I wanna talk about something that Ashley talked about last night. Uh, Ashley talked about subscribers. The way we are, um, the way we're viewed by YouTube as a legitimate creator is based off the of number of subscribers. Based off of my numbers, I have 320,000 people that actually watch, that's individual watchers. 
I only have 48,000 subscribers. So that means that only 17% of the people that are actually watching the videos actually subscribe. Why? I don't know. But I have seen people that I know that are regular commenters, regular watchers. I click on their channel and I can click on your channel and see if you're subscribed to me. I click on people's channels and see that they're subscribed to all these people, but they're not subscribed to me or to Ashley or to Trey. So please, please, please subscribe to us. Once I get to 100,000 subscribers, YouTube will take me more seriously as a creator. And that's when they support me more. They actually will give me a person that helps me to grow the channel and get the word out there and all those things. So subscribing doesn't just give you the, uh, it's not a thing where you just click on it and it tells you I put a new video up. It literally helps us as creators. Um, so I urge you to also subscribe to Trey, uh, Globetrotting with Trey, Ashley Drew as well. Uh, it's important to all of us to, to be able to, uh, to create. <clears throat> the other thing I was going to tell you, and excuse me, I'm <clears throat> struggling a little bit, but I don't have the coronavirus. Um, the, uh, I have started a new thing. I've created, we're right at 300 videos. I've never asked you for a penny, not one of you. Um, I've created the first 300 videos and I say, I, the Royal, I, you know, Ashley was involved. Trey was involved and there's, uh, uh, other people involved. Um, Sally Hodell would be another one. Uh, John Daly would be another one. Um, Stan Perkins. There's a lot of people involved. Dean Nicopolis. I mean, I could go on and on. Y'all know who, who you are, Tennessee Ted. Um, and we're not asking you for money now, but I have people reaching out and going, hey, man, you need to go to Hawaii and film all that stuff. You need to do this. That's great. We want to do all that stuff. I run a small business. I have bills to pay. You know, we all have bills to pay. So I have started on this actual stream. You can do money. That's a that's a YouTube thing. And when you watch the videos, that does create revenue. Um, so that does help to offset the costs of going and making these videos. I filmed, we currently have out 293 videos, I think tomorrow morning will be 294. I have another 55 or 60 in the can that I haven't edited yet. And I'm talking about really, really good videos. I haven't edited any of the Biloxi stuff, any of New Orleans. I haven't edited a lot of the LA stuff. I haven't edited out. I did all the follow that dream stuff in Florida. I haven't edited that out. I mean, I got killer stuff. It's just, it takes time. So if you're inclined to be a part of what we're doing, I started a Patreon. I don't know how it works. I just started it. So I'll have to figure that out. But you're able to, to support here. So I'm not begging you for money. I'm just telling you that I've had people go, man, I'd love to be involved with this monetarily. What can I do to help? That's what you can do to help. I'm not asking you for money. Uh, Ashley Drew's not asking you for money. Trey's not. I'm just telling you that we've created the first 300 on our own using our own funds. So if you want to get involved where the next 300 or the next 600 or whatever it is, um, please do that. A lot of creators on YouTube, that's how they actually do it. They have Patreon. They have these things, the, the revenue that they get from YouTube. That's how they go and create. My favorite YouTuber is Adam the Woo. And so you'll see a little bit of Adam the Woo in all my videos. Um, I do kind of shout outs and Adam doesn't know me from Adam. I say that I, he does. He's, he's commented on a thing or two, but I know he doesn't watch me, but I do watch Adam the woo. He's my favorite. So I do a lot of things that are related to, um, uh, a lot of things that, that I learned from Adam, uh, in these things. So we've got some big stuff, um, coming up and, and thank you so much to people. I'm seeing people say that <clears throat> they're loyal subscribers and I see that Patreon thing. Um, it's, and another person to support is Memphis Mafia Kid, Danny. Uh, the Smiths are the real deal. They're the real McCoy. I've never met Elvis in my life. Um, I'm a huge fan. I'm a fan just like you. Um, I just, I'm a fan with the camera that 
spends the time to go figure these things out and tell these stories. And I love to tell stories. Um, I'm, and I'm guys, this is going by so fast. And somebody said they met Adam the Woo in, um, in 2018 and I did too. Uh, I, I actually did. I was at, uh, I had just watched Adam, uh, doing the rope drop at Disney and, uh, I thought, well, while I'm at Disney, I just had back surgery. This was, this was longer in 2018. I think this would have been 2017 or 2016. I'd had back surgery. And right after back surgery, I went to Disney. We stayed in a resort. And I went with some friends of mine to rope drop one morning. I didn't even know it was a thing until I saw it on Adam's channel. I went there and I'm standing there with my friends. I've got my camera and I'm waiting for rope drop. And I just kind of pan around and I look back behind me and there's Adam the Woo standing back there. And so I got to go back there and talk to him, get my picture made with him. So that was a banner day, as it were. Um, and I really, really like Adam. So if y'all get a chance to watch Adam after you've watched our videos, feel free. <laughs> Some people are saying they went to, they're saying that they uh, subscribed to Danny and somebody said that they went to Hawaii. Tom Smith felt lost because you didn't have any of my videos. And man, if I go, I promise you we'll, we'll put together a package where you'll know how to find every single thing. And um, EP Fanatic, thank you so much. Look, I, I, I want y'all to know that I'm just, I'm a fan just like you. There is uh, nothing special about me. I just make videos. And um, Von Staus, yeah. Well, see, that's another, I need to go to Florida. I have a couple of things in Florida um, that I need to go do. Um, and I just, you know, one thing about my business and some people are saying days with Jordan line and, and I know, uh, I've seen the videos, um, not my taste. Let's just say that that doesn't mean that, there's, that Jordan's doing anything wrong. In fact, I will say this, Jordan started behind me, um, and has passed me in subscribers. So he's clearly doing something right. Um, and Manly Strangers asked me when I'm coming to Waco, and I will be coming to Waco because uh, Janice Fadal wants me to come there and, of course, film the uh, um, the house that Elvis stayed in, Eddie Fadal's house. They own it as an Airbnb there. Um, and again, some people are saying thank you for this. I'm, I'm glad that you are catching this. I like the carpet bagger too. But guys, um, I've I film so much and edit so much. And Trey, if you ever get a chance to talk to him, I literally edit, and I'm not exaggerating this number, I edit 20 hours a week on average. Um, and that is not during work time. I, I have a, I own a business. I work five days a week, actually six days a week. I work Saturdays. So when I come home, I edit like right now, Wednesday night. Tomorrow night, I have karate and I edit after. Friday night, I generally don't edit unless we'll, Lori and I usually go eat and then we'll come home and watch live PD. And then Saturday afternoons, I edit. Sunday after church, I'll edit. So this is a lot of work that goes into this, but I know you're depending on us. And, and I, I take it as a, my responsibility to do this. And so we're trying our best to stay on top of this and create and create and create and create. Um, another thing that I, that I want you to know is the uh, let me, uh, while I'm thinking about this, the uh, Gates of Graceland episode with the bicycle should come out um, pretty soon. We have 458 people on. Um, should come out pretty soon. I, they said this month, but with this, this stuff going on, I don't know. Um, but what I'd like for you all guys to do, and please tell your friends, I don't necessarily want them to know that I've asked you to do this. I want it to kind of kind of be grassroots. Um, I'd like for you to, uh, when that video comes out, let them know if you like what we did, if you like, uh, me being a part of that, let them know, please, you know, bombard them and, um, let them know, um, what, you know, that you like us being a part of what they're doing, that we could all be a team together, if you will. Um, Last time I saw that was 1971. So where was that 71? Was that at, at, at uh, Graceland or was that in California? 
I would assume Graceland. <laughs> I don't think I'd be a good Tom Parker. I, I think uh, Tom Hanks can probably handle that. Yeah, somebody's mentioned in the fall of that dream stuff. You know, um, I, I'm ashamed that I haven't already edited that and put it out. Um, but I'm not satisfied with my drone footage. But to be honest, my drone was acting up. It was doing some weird color stuff. But I don't know when I'll be able to go back and film that stuff again. Um so I'm probably going to try to colorize it a little bit and use it. My, I was using my Phantom and it was just doing these weird digital pixelating things. And, uh, but the footage is still good. I got to, to fly, you know, I flew it. The, the flying was good. It was just some pixelation issues. And somebody's asking me if my weekly spa guy channel was inspired by Adam uh, daily woo. It is. I tried to do the daily spa guy. <laughs> I think I made 62 episodes in a row, which means I was working full time. I was going out and filming every day. I was editing every night and I was uploading every night and I made 62 days, but the pace was exhausting. And that was before I was doing these, these other videos. So what weekly spa guy is, if, if some of you may not know it exists, um, weekly spa guy is my second channel. And an example would be, I went to Germany and some friends of mine uh, from Poland, uh, Chris, he's over all the radio stations in Poland. He actually came here to Hendersonville and watched the, um, the eclipse with me, him and his family. They came here to see the eclipse. So we became friends and we became friends through YouTube. He was a subscriber and he watches the videos. Hello, Chris, if you're watching. Um, so his family was nice enough to drive from Poland when I was over there on tour all the way to the Netherlands and take me back to Germany, which for them one way was about a 13 or 14 hour trip. So that was quite a sacrifice for them. It was, um, just, just good people. But anyway, they took me, I got to go there. And, um, so when I cut my Elvis videos, I realized that shorter videos are better and, and more, cons you know, Sometimes I can't tell a story in 12 minutes. Sometimes it takes 18 to cover the bases. So anyway, on the second channel, I had the video of them coming and picking me up and all the things we did, including the Elvis stuff. That's what's on the second channel. After I edit that, I cut just the Elvis stuff out and I put it on the main channel, on the Spa Guy channel. So that kind of gives you an idea. If you ever... Uh, don't have anything else to do. I have hour long videos on the other channel and I'm going to say there's, there's probably a hundred, I don't know how many, I'm going to say there's 150 videos on there, 160. And some of them are, are four parts an hour long. When I went to Europe, I did, I think a series of six and each series has four hour long videos in it. So what's that? 24 hours. So I have 24 hours of me in Europe on that channel, so if you're ever interested. I don't get nearly the watchers on that channel. I have 8,000 subscribers over there, but not nearly the watchers. Um, and evidently Mika's here. I see Trey is talking to Mika. And Ashley is saying thank you to everyone for supporting us. And if you enjoy what we've done with Grayson, let them know. Absolutely. You know, we were involved in the bicycle uh, discovery. And they have acknowledged us, you know, I'm, I'm in a uh, Gates of Graceland video about the bicycle and that's uh, very nice of them to acknowledge us. And uh, we would love to be a part of what they do, but, but I realize that they're running a business and, and, and we're, we're fans, you know, they, they see us as fans, which is fine. That's, that's great. Um, but I could take the one thing that, that, I will say about that, and I don't know if any of those people will watch this, but one thing I'll say about that is this. We've got X amount of Elvis movies. We've got X amount of Elvis pictures. We've got X amount of Elvis music. What you have unlimited is Elvis stories. So the thing that they haven't focused on or the thing that they haven't um, um, 
dealt with is uh, all the stories related to the stuff. You go in there and find the receipt for something, then you can go tell the story about what happened to that, where it came from. There's just, I think it, those, I think those are interesting stories. Um, and there's somebody from Algeria. Wow. That's, that's un, unbelievable. And somebody just said, who's Elvis? <laughs> Elvis Costello, man. That's we're big Elvis Costello people. And someone's asking, is Graceland closed down? I do not think so. Um, to my knowledge, they haven't, but at some point they're going to have to, um, I feel like, because what you don't want to happen from a business standpoint, um, is you keep your business open. Somebody gets infected there and they sue you because someone died or got sick or whatever. And it may not even be related to you. Um, and look, Jean Bien, he played bass for Michael. That's really cool. You must be a heck of a player, man. Yeah, John Daly's saying they're open. Nice to meet you, uh, John Bien. Well, okay, Charlotte Gordon, she brought up a great point. And, you know, this is something that I did not put in the video when we filmed it, and I could kick myself because I think it's an important point. Um. Nobody should be down on EPE for not discovering that that bicycle was Elvis's, and I'll tell you why. Um, that bicycle, from firsthand accounts, now I can't say absolutely, this is, this is one eyewitness more or less, but I think he's a credible eyewitness, Jerry Schilling. They said that Jerry told them that in 1957, when Elvis first bought the house, that that bicycle was in the corner of that room. I'm not saying that that's not true. I'm just saying that that's um, why would Jerry be in that room? But anyway, I, that's that's eyewitness testimony by somebody I feel like is credible. So it's highly probable that's true. So up until there's two photos of that bicycle. One of them was discovered in Gladys's purse up in the attic by Angie Marchese. When she was uh, looking through the purse, she pulled it out and it was that photograph, the one that you see that has the fenders on the bicycle. You flip it over and on the back, it says uh, age 13 is what it says on the back of it. They have, that is their photograph. That happened, I think about 2005 from memory. About six or seven years ago, another photograph popped up. That's the photograph that I actually am doing a story about tomorrow. Uh, that'll be the video tomorrow where I believe that photograph was taken at. That photograph, there's no fenders uh, on the bicycle. Actually, you know what? I've got it backwards. I'm sorry. The video that I'm doing tomorrow is about the one that was in Gladys's purse that had the fenders on it. That's the video tomorrow. The, the other photograph, the one with no fenders on it is on Poplar Street. Uh, and I did a video about that way back. So I may, I may put that video back up on Friday. What I'm doing now is a day that I don't put a video up, I try to put up an old video because a lot of you don't realize I have almost 300 videos and a lot of those old videos are not getting seen again. So I'm trying to bring them back up and refresh everybody's memory. But anyway, that bicycle, until those two photographs came out, um, there was no way that anybody could figure it out. All the books, all the history books have always said that the, um, the bicycle was a Firestone brand bicycle. We now know that it was a Columbia brand or it's a Shapley hardware brand made by Columbia. Um, but there was no way to figure that out until you had those. It required those two photographs. One of them is owned by Graceland. The other one was owned by an individual that passed away and now the guy that they call the Elvis cup guy, he's got a YouTube channel. His claim to fame is he owns a cup that Elvis drank out of. He claims to own that photograph. Now how he would own that photograph remains to be seen, but he makes that claim. So Graceland would have had no way until these two photographs came into play to even figure it out. So in their defense, they couldn't have figured it out until that happened. And by the time that those two photographs came together, it's just like a lot of things. You've got things sitting in your house that if you went over and looked, you go, oh, well, I forgot that I had this. 
I think that it was one of those things where it was so close that they just had no ability to, uh, it, it just wasn't pointed out. And look, I've seen the bicycle before too. I've been, I've been to Graceland many times, I've seen the bicycle. It never crossed my mind to look to see if it was the bicycle. It crossed Ashley's mind. She came back to me and said, hey, you don't think, do you, that that could be Elvis's bike? I said, surely not. And um, but it turned out that it was even on two fronts. Um, it was Elvis's bicycle because it matched those photographs. But then the tag says Shapley Hardware. The guy that owned Tupelo Hardware where the guitar was purchased was a Shapley Hardware, like a, a regional sales rep. So that bicycle and the guitar came from Tupelo Hardware, which is pretty amazing. Two loves in Elvis's life. He loved vehicles and he loved music. Both originated in Tupelo Hardware. So if you ever go to Tupelo, which they'll have the Tupelo uh, thing, the Elvis week in June, early June, by all means go there. That's where it all started at right there. Um, as far as his two loves, that's where those things came together. And I'm drinking uh, emergency or, you know, vitamin C in this. So I urge you to do the same. Now I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see another. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I could see. I really do. Some people are saying they're glad that it's hanging in there. And I know some people felt like that maybe it should stay in the corner. But you know what? I hate to break it to y'all. Um, you know, they felt like to leave it there, leave it alone. When you go to Graceland, the paint on that house is not the paint that was there when Elvis was there. They have to upkeep things. You have to take care of things. If you don't, they just fall apart and they go away. And that bicycle had some really bad... Um, uh, it had some really bad rust damage. In fact, one of the bicycle's not rideable because one of the rims has a stress crack in it. That stress crack is from rusting from age. And so the, the bike is absolutely beautiful. Blue is my, is my color. And, uh, somebody's talking about the hardest job in the world, my toilet paper, um, uh, video. And I, I shot that video years ago and just never put it out because, uh, at my business, I don't know why, um, but my employees would not replace the toilet paper roll and it drove me crazy. So I started filming it every time I would run into it. I literally, I could have gone for 30 minutes of me changing toilet paper rolls. But anyway, that's now I thought was a proper time to teach people how to put it to properly change a toilet paper roll. And somebody saying they love the videos Carl Perkins son that's Stan and I'll tell you what guys and gals Stan is a fantastic person just a just good people if you ever meet somebody who's just good people that is Stan and he um he's given me a lot of insight I actually filmed five and a half hours with him I think I've only put out about five or six videos with Stan and I need to put out more but I hate to tell y'all that you, a lot of you do not support anything but Elvis videos. And what I mean is I could put out a video uh, with, I did the Stan Perkins video about the, uh, the million dollar quartet. And uh, when I put that video out, uh, there's some real revelations in there about what the million dollar quartet actually was or wasn't. It actually was not a quartet and it wasn't a million dollars. Um, but you have to watch the video to see. So I thought this is an incredible video. This is told by somebody that was there that day, son that knew, I mean, this guy, when I say he knows history, he re, he can tell you stuff. And look, I talk to a lot of people and interview a lot of people. I interview some people and then you go back and you start looking at the facts and you go, mm, they're, you know, they got a lot of stuff wrong. I filmed with Stan Perkins five hours. I didn't find one thing that didn't line up with, and he told a lot of detailed history. So when you get it from Stan Perkins, you can bank on it. It is absolutely, uh, absolutely 100%. And uh, Ashley's saying they are, Stan and his wife are extremely kind. 
Aldo, my brother-in-law, he's married to my sister, Aldo Simmons. He said that his wife welcomed uh, my sister and him in. And, and he's, he's right. They're, they're just great people. Is it okay to tell people I'm in here about the cover songs I performed on my channel to honor Elvis? Eh, I don't know. Billy, when are you going to do the Jim Reeves plane crash area? Okay. That's a great, great, great question. You know what? I have filmed that guys. I filmed a lot of stuff, but I have to be, I don't just put stories out to be putting stories out. I have to be satisfied that the footage is good. What I'm telling you is good. And the Jim Reeves story um, is, is pretty incredible. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. I don't know if any of y'all other than this guy are interested in Jim. I love all history. Not, you know, I'm, we do Elvis stuff because I think I do more Elvis stuff because that's what I know. And look, I wouldn't call myself an Elvis expert. Uh, a year ago or two years ago, I went to, um, they have the Elvis thing in Franklin, Tennessee that Tom Brown puts on. And I went over there to, uh, to that event and they had a Elvis uh, uh, trivia contest. I wasn't even close to winning that. I was terrible at it. But I am, I focus on certain things, certain aspects, if you will, that I know about. I know more about timeline and things like that. They were asking questions like, what was Elvis's hit in, in 1962 on this day for this movie? I don't, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to ever know that stuff. In fact, I've probably only seen out of the movies, I bet I, I've seen 15 of them. So I need to watch Charo. John Daly highly recommends Charo. I've never seen it. Um, so I need to go back and do that. Actually, Drew has never seen a Elvis movie, by the way, which uh, blows my mind. But she said that she always has something to look forward to. Uh, and that makes perfect sense to me. I understand it. When we were kids watching these Elvis movies, I couldn't believe when VHS came out and I could actually watch it when I wanted to. And I bought Elvis movies at that time. They, they came back out then. And John Daly saying Charo. Um, not shame on Ashley Drew. Quit saying that, Dolly. She has the, the ability to watch or not watch. She always has something to look forward to. And, but I've just not seen many of the movies. But anyway, I don't know about those kinds of, of history. But the things that we've studied, I know about. So I would, I'm far from an Elvis expert. And I will say that I learn stuff every day. And sometimes we put out a video. And then we find out that... Um, and Dean is texting me, so let me see what this is. Elvis at VHS on his airplane when they first came out. Oh, VHS. Oh, he had VHS, he's telling me. So um, that's Dean Nicopolis. And Dean was on the airplane, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I, I, I kind of lost track of what I was talking about. Uh, but anyway, we could, I couldn't believe it when they came out and they had in North Carolina, they had a channel called, uh, that was, you know, like everybody else, we had three channels plus, uh, public radio and, um, they somehow my phone was, the thing is on, um, but we had national public radio, but we had a, a show called, uh, we'll see's red eye cinema. And every Friday night we'll see would play three movies of a type. It could be three army movies, Toro, 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 and Sansa Iwo Jima, or it would be three Westerns, Westerns, or it would be three Elvis movies or three scary movies. So you can cool believe I stayed up all night, cool well believe that I stayed up all night and watched um, those, uh, those three Elvis movies because it was the only way you could watch them. And Ashley says, nope, I refuse to watch them. They're always there as a treat. That's right, Ashley. You do what you do. Um, and Jim Reeves was a plane crash. That's right. And so let me tell y'all something about Jim Reeves. I just want to drop a little thing in there about that. And there's a question that went by that I'm not going to be able to answer now. But um, Jim Reeves, a lot of people don't know that the Jim Reeves, the file for the plane crash is sealed in the JFK assassination file. So hmm, that makes you go, why would that be? So I think that Jim Reeves was being used as a courier 
to move uh, military records along with being a country music singer and some other stuff. So I'm working on some of those videos, but just know that when I film something, that doesn't mean that um, I don't film it last week and I put it out this week. I have stuff that I've, that I've been filming. Uh, I'm working on the, the MLK assassination stuff. Um, I'm just not satisfied with all of the material that I have. I, I need more, but I've been filming that thing off and on for actually before I was doing Elvis stuff. That's been over, that's probably been five years that I've been filming for that particular, particular thing. Uh, and I believe that, um, that that was a government hit, but that's another story. And I mean, I can make a case for that. I'm pretty confident of that. Um, so let me see what somebody else's. Uh, asking easy, Corey. She's a married lady. Lottie, 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 Miss Cloudy makes me smile. It's that's a great song. Do you think the birthplace is the original house? You know what? That is a uh, an interesting question. So I will say this, I do not know, uh, but I find it when I talk to people in Tupelo, I find that about 50% say it is and about 50% say it's not. And I think that Ashley and Trey and John Daly would probably concur that number. It's almost an even split of people that say it is and say it isn't. Um, I would say that, I mean, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I know that he lived, the house was right there in that. Um, we just filmed the other day with, uh, and I have, it. this is a, a little inside treat for you. We filmed with, uh, a lot of you know who Noah Presley is. If you remember where Jesse Guerin is supposedly buried in Priceville, Noah is the big gravestone right there beside where Jesse supposedly buried. Uh, we filmed a uh, weekend before last at, and uh, Ashley says a hundred percent that it's about 50, 50. And I found it to be that same way. We filmed at, uh, Trey and I filmed in Tupelo. We were there for Dakota Smith, Elvis's third cousin, Billy Smith and Joe Smith's grandson, Joey Smith's son. Uh, he did an MMA fight, and um, we while we were there, I set up a lot of stuff to film. So we were fortunate enough through Sally Hodell. She actually is the one that, that put this together. We filmed with Larry Presley. Larry's 75. He's Noah's son. Larry would be Vernon's first cousin uh, once removed because Larry's father – was Vernon's father's brother, if you will. So actually, it wouldn't be once removed. It would, they would be first cousins. Uh, Elvis would be Larry's first cut, second first cousin once removed, second cousin. I don't know, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So um, we were able to go with with uh, Larry to Priceville. We went with Larry to his house. We went with Larry to where they lived on. Um, Kelly Street, which is one of those streets that's right there in front of the birth house. Uh, he took us around and, and he knew so much. He opened, he, he, he solved some mysteries for us that where people had told us like uh, Orville Bean's farm was here. And he was like, no, Orville Bean's farm was here because uh, Larry actually was a paper boy there. He delivered papers to all these people's houses. And he, um, so he did business with each one. So he was able to go, the Smiths lived in this house and such and such lived there. And he knew every person that lived in every single house. And he also showed us some other things. And he was a kid uh, when uh, he remembers um, Elvis. Now Elvis was older than him by 10 years, but he told us a story about Elvis and uh, Natalie Wood coming to his house when he was 11 in Tupelo and he'll tell that story. So that, that video is coming up. Um, we have a lot of really killer stuff coming up and we also got to film, uh, let's see, Mary, Larry made me see Tupelo in 1940. I can see it like that. Now I agree with that. Uh, 
uh, Trey, he he showed us because he was a real person. He lived in Tupelo his whole life. In fact, he was the sheriff of uh, Lee County and his brother was the sheriff of Lee County. And his dad was the mayor of Tupelo, East Tupelo. Um, but anyway, so those things are things that are coming up, which are really, really killer. And so I'm going to look over here and see, are you still in contact with Jim Murray and Bob Lanning from the Elvis concert tour? I see Jim, Bob doesn't live here. Bob lives in LA, but Jim lives here. Jim actually married, and this will be a little tidbit for you, uh, kiddies. Um, do y'all remember Cheryl Nielsen that sang uh, with the Imperials? Uh, you'll probably remember him doing, Is it was it softly and tenderly that he sang that Elvis loved so good? Um, Jim was the early tenor for the Imperials, and then uh, Cheryl was late. And I may be wrong. Cheryl may have sung with J.D. Sumner and the Stamps. But anyway, Cheryl Nielsen was a tenor for Elvis, and uh, Jim Murray was a tenor for Elvis. Well, Cheryl died. He passed away. His wife married Jim recently. So she moved here and her and Jim got together. So she actually has married two tenors that sing for Elvis. And she also sings as well. And I think she is going to be on the next concert tour with Jim and Arjan and, and uh, Bob Lanning. And so for those of you that did watch the, uh, the Bob Lanning stuff, um, a lot of you probably don't even know who Bob Lanning is. So let me tell you, tell you about that. I've got some videos, but I think, most of those videos are probably over on the second channel where the long videos are. Um, Bob played for Elvis in 1970. So a lot of people don't know Ronnie Tut left for a period of time and Bob played during that time. I think Bob played 74 shows off the top of my head. I know he played the Houston Astrodome. Um, but Bob also did some other incredible stuff, was a very nice man to me. Uh, I was honored to play in the band with them. Um, they didn't like me in their band, so they kicked me out. But that's that's another story for another day. Um, but it actually benefited all of us by that happening because I stayed in Europe and went and filmed every day. So I got to film things that otherwise I would have never gotten to film by staying with the with the group. I, I played nine shows with them. Um, but Bob played on, I'll tell you some things that he played on that you would recognize. He played the, uh, the Happy Days theme. He played the Flintstones theme, uh, the Love Boat. So a lot of these famous TV show uh, themes was Elvis's drummer from 1970. And he played on a couple of records from 1972. So 1970, not two, but also 1970 as well. Um, so that's a little bit of information about Bob Lanning. Uh, 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 John Davis telling me he played in, in Vegas in 1970. He played that whole year basically until Ronnie decided he wanted to come back. Um, and I like, you know, if you're looking at the two different um, drumming styles, Ronnie Tut is my guy, but Elvis chose both of them. So, you know, everybody has a reason for what they do. Um, do you know the Elvis Express newspaper prints a lot of stories from your channel in Memphis Mafia Kid? Yes, indeed I do. I've talked to that man and he is very nice and he agreed to put up uh, links to my videos in his stories from here on to the future so more people can see them. I have not seen Sean Clush uh, in person. And look, there's a place for ETAs. That's just not my thing. Uh, but some people love uh, ETAs. And I, I, I'm not mad about ETAs. It's just not something that I personally care to see. Um, and, and I shouldn't say that. I've seen um, somebody earlier mentioned... Um, Eddie Miles. I saw Eddie Miles with uh, Charlie Hodge. I actually did business with Charlie Hodge too, very much like I did with Scotty. Um, just not quite to the, not as much stuff, but very, very similar deal. 
And I would go see Eddie Miles. And I thought Eddie was really, really, really good. So I'm not saying that there's not a place for them. I just, I like the real Elvis himself more than I care for seeing somebody being Elvis. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that doesn't mean that we can't still all be friends. Um, okay, so Ashley's saying, what questions do you have? Somebody, I saw the Tommy Steele thing go by. It went by really fast. Uh, and that that story is, um, I see Melissa Winstead. Hello, Melissa. Uh, thank you for those uh, photos of your birthday presents. Um, the Tommy Steele thing, there's, there's a rumor that when Elvis was coming back from, that at some point Elvis went to England and hung out with Tommy Steele and traveled around and did all that kind of stuff. And I think that I'm, I'm right about what you were asking. Um, that rumor is absolutely unequivocally not true. It's just simply not true. Um, Elvis never went to England. He set foot in the UK by going to Canada is part of the UK, believe it or not. Um, and by going to, what is it? Scotland, Presswick airport in Scotland, they stopped to refuel. And then he got right back on the airplane and came on to America. Um, so that is absolutely not a true, not a true story. Uh, and I back that up with, uh, Elizabeth and Rex, both of them were traveling with him. And I asked both of them and they said that it, it did not happen. Billy, did you do a video about the Memphian? Ashley Drew and I filmed a video about the Memphian outside, but I have not gone inside yet to film, but I will. I've talked to them. I just haven't been able to work it out yet. And Tom Smith saying he heard Lamar went to England while EP was in Germany. I doubt that, Tom. And I'll tell you why. Um, they didn't have any money. So this is what Elizabeth said about that. Elizabeth said that, that you know, Lamar and Red West were with Elvis uh, in Germany in uh, Bad Noheim, and she said that because they were not German citizens, they could not work. They uh, could not earn money. So they would literally beg uh, Vernon every day for money to go down to Beck's bar for, for beer money, more or less. And so, uh, in fact, that caused Red to beat a guy up at Beck's bar because, uh, and she tells the story so well, I actually have a, a, a lot of stuff from, uh, from Rex and Elizabeth I've never put out. I need to, I guess I need to get to, to editing, don't I guys? Um, but, but I put out, you know, I like to, to, to mix it up when I'm putting things out. But anyway, Elizabeth said that, that, uh, some guy down at Beck's bar, which was in Bad Noheim, not far from where they lived uh, downtown, had gotten wind that Red was uh, was shining Elvis's shoes, more or less. Uh, and that's what basically what Elvis was doing was get was giving them jobs to do so they could earn enough money to go drink. And some some guy said to Red West that uh, he called him Elvis's shoe shine boy. And, you know, what happened after that, he clean that guy's clock and, and, you know, turn the whole bar out. And uh, Elizabeth, when she told it, she thought that was just so funny. But um, from what I've heard about Red West, he was pretty tough. And you don't, you don't go against Red West. You, you get your block knocked off. And, and that's not, maybe that happened. He really, um, that really happened. Anna Schaefer is asking me about Brian uh, and Sally, what they did with the Colonel's house. They have not recreated it, but now I have not been out there to Bon Aqua. They last time I was out there, they were clearing off a spot to start rebuilding the uh, the fan club house. Uh, but it's been it's probably been two months since I've been out there, so they could have started it or not started it. 
and they're starting to sell off some things. You know, he ended up with a lot of stuff from that house and he spent a lot of money recovering the things from that house. And when I say a lot of money, I'm talking about five figures. He, he spent a lot of money to keep that stuff from going in the, in the dump. And um, Misty Justice says, yep, I need to get those videos out. Billy doesn't answer your question. Send it again. He puts his glasses on. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Colonel Sanders was from outer space. You know what? As long as he brought the chicken back from Mars, man, have y'all had that chicken? It's pretty good. Do you think Elizabeth will ever go to Elvis week again? The answer is no. I missed her and Rex when they came a couple of years ago. In fact, this poster right here, I had made for that event and I'll show you, I have another one here. This one is not signed, but that's what this is. This is Rex's book, Living the Moments. That's Rex and Elvis. This day was when Elvis got his sergeant stripes and Rex is helping him sew it on. And that's Elvis and Elizabeth at 14 go to Strasse. And rexodus.com is where I sell Rex's book this book and I have autographed copies left. And let me tell you what happened with Rex. I, we were actually, Trey and I were actually talking about this earlier. I'm in my studio is where I'm at. Um, he signed this for me and uh, almost exactly two weeks later, he passed away. He was 85 years old and he pulled me aside. He knew that he was in, you know, when you're 85 years old, you don't know if you're going to live another day or another 10 years or whatever. And he had some real, some heart issues, uh, but what a great guy. I mean, somebody that once I got to know him, we talked on the phone almost every day, just good people. And I love Rex and Elizabeth. I still talk to Elizabeth uh, pretty, pretty constantly. Um, but we, he pulled me aside. He had just published this book. he had only had it for maybe a year. And he had bought 2,000 copies of it. And he had sold about 400 of them, had 1,600 in his garage. And he pulled me aside one day and said, Billy, I don't know what's going to happen to me, but you got to promise me if I die, you take care of those books. You don't let Elizabeth be burdened with those books. So I promised him that I would sell those books. And I have, but it's been very, very slow selling. I'll put a video up and sell about 10 books. I'll put a video up about them and sell about 10 books. And it's not a thing where I'm making a ton of money on it and that kind of stuff. What I'm trying to do is buy the books from Elizabeth so we have them, so the stories are not lost. But they also wrote Sergeant Presley. And by the way, this is not, none of this, what I'm going to tell you is done yet, but I am working on a movie deal about that book, about their time with Elvis. It's an incredible story. Uh, and if any of y'all have seen it before, um, everybody um, in Elvis's life ran to him for money and for fame. Rex and Elizabeth ran away from Elvis for love. And it's the story is unbelievable. And, and it couldn't be two nicer people. They were married for 58 years. And um, so if you don't know the story, I have a few videos out about it. You need to check it out, but also buy the book. Uh, and I may even try to do audio book on that or something like that. Let's see. Dennis Bray, boy, I know you're in Lumberton. Uh, I, I go back to North Carolina every now and again. We were there. Um, we were there in November, October. I, I don't know. I was there. And look, I filmed the whole time I was there. No Elvis. Well, I did film Elvis stuff. Y'all saw the Bill Stovall stuff in, in Newburn. And uh, I filmed there. I filmed in Wilson, but I didn't get everything I needed in Wilson, North Carolina. So I got to go back before I can finish that story. Um, but to, uh, hey, Tom Collins, I see you there, brother. We got to get together sometime, man. You're local to me. Um, I did not get to interview Kang Ree, and unfortunately, he has passed away. Thanks for keep. So <laughs> I'm keeping six feet away from John B. N., the uh, bass player for Michael Jackson. Yep. Yep, man. We can't get closer than six feet through this computer, I bet. So actually, Drew wants to know who here has not subscribed. Guys. 
it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. All you do is hit the subscribe button. And when you hit that subscribe button, if another video comes out, it just alerts you. That's all it does. When you go to YouTube and you're on that main page, if you subscribe to somebody, their videos pop up there. The newest, you know, it'll put the latest ones up. That's all it does. So I don't know why people have, I can't understand why you haven't subscribed. When I subscribe, when I like somebody, a video that I don't want to lose them, I don't want to not be able to find them again. So I subscribe so I can, um, so I can come, come back. Somebody's asking, is Elvis coffin photo really him? I have a video about that. Brad Myers from Raleigh, from Greenville, North Carolina. And you know, my mom lives there. Um, I will say uh, Sam Jones barbecue to you, my friend. Uh, let's see, boy, these things are going by so fast. Somebody subscribed to all of them. So the answer to the question about Elvis in the casket photo, in my opinion, and you need to watch the video, but in my opinion, no, that is not a photograph. And um, that is a, uh, I think is a composite of photographs. And I'll tell you why. I've got a friend, Bill Stoball, the guy that was in the, in the Newburn videos, big Elvis fan. He uh, worked for a newspaper and he told me that the process, and this is going to blow your mind when I tell you this, but this will kind of, I think, bring it all into focus. Why I believe that that is a composite of things. You, you know what DPI is, dots per inch. When you're looking at a uh, rag newspaper like, like the Inquirer, it's going to be 60, 72 dots per inch, 81 dots per inch. When you go to a real high-end magazine, I think he said that's like 140 dots per inch DPI. What, so what that means is the lower the DPI, the less crisp a photo is and the less crisp it is, you know, the, the, the more blurry it is. The higher the DPI, the more perfect it is like a real photograph. The process back in those days was they didn't just take a photograph and uh, and put it in a press and, and make it a, a newspaper. They had to, to put a screen over it and take a photo of it through the screen that became the piece that was used to print the newspaper. So basically they have a screen full of holes at 81 DPI or 72 DPI. And Mika uh, Matthews may know about this. So basically they would take this composite and glue all these things together and then put that screen over and take a photograph of it. And that photograph is what transferred to the newspaper. So that explains how they were able to cut. I think they were able to cut photographs up and create this composite, put the dots over it, shoot a photograph of it. And then it makes it all look like it's one piece like Photoshop. And um, let's see. And the Inquirer archives were destroyed in a fire. That is absolutely correct. And the other thing is, is the camera that he used. And yeah, Skylight Inn. See, I was I lived in Aiden, Brad. I, I went to school in Aiden. So I knew those guys at the Skylight. I lived in Aiden and Winterville and uh, Green and uh, Kinston and LaGrange and Goldsboro um, at different times. But the... Uh, Photo, in my opinion, is is that it's just a, simply a composite. I hope that helps clear that up. And Amika is saying they still have those machines at the Banner Independent, so they're still using that technology. And that's old school technology, but a lot of people still use it because it works. Ashley Drew wants to know what everybody's favorite Spa Guy video is. And Tina Kelly says, how do I donate? I would love to. There's a way to do it on here. Tina, I have never done this before, so I honestly don't, don't know. Uh, I, I wish I did. I'm working. Once I get my, um, my Patreon page finished, I've got it done, but it's not complete. There's a lot of stuff to fill out to, to get it like it's supposed to be. Um, once I get that, I'll post it on, on here and on YouTube and stuff. And uh, Seymour said he liked the Lamborghini ride. And I, I think um, uh, Trey would probably concur with that. That Lamborghini was awesome. And actually, Dave, the insurance guy, called me today. If y'all don't see his videos, you need to go to his channel. He's got uh, some history stuff, a lot of JFK stuff. 
he called me today and said that he had to go over there to the place where I rented that from. Um, actually, I think it was yesterday he called me and told me that. He said he was over there doing, he, Dave does, he's an insurance guy, so he does car inspections. And he said that, uh, that he was over there and he mentioned to the guy, uh, hey, did you, uh, my friend, you know, made a video, rented a Lamborghini from here and made a video on YouTube. He said, you talking about the spy guy? He said, yeah, that guy scalded that car. What was wrong with him? <laughs> and he's right. I did. <laughs> I'd never driven a Lamborghini before, so I gave it all she had. <laughs> what do you think of Ginger coming to the uh, Hugh Hotel? I think that's great. I will actually be there. I was. I bought tickets right away. And uh, let's see. Do you know about the Colonel movie that Tom Hanks is making in Australia? Yep, I do. And it's going to be a Baz Luhrmann. Uh, it'll be a musical, most likely. And uh, he likes to take liberties with uh, with. Uh, I would love for somebody to just tell the story and be as accurate as possible. I don't believe that that is uh, what is going to happen. I think that it's going to be a, um, uh, it's going to be a artistic interpretation that doesn't make it wrong. And I'm going to take up for that. It was actually Trey that brought this to my, to my attention. And I think he's exactly right. Um, that movie is not for us. We're Elvis fans. Um, that movie is for people that are not Elvis fans, very much like that special that they did where all of the current day stars sang Elvis stuff. And I see somebody has a just supporting. Thank you. Thank you so much. B, B Timbies. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, the, uh, the movie is going to be for younger people. And, and look, we can use some younger people, guys. If, if we don't get younger people involved in this, in 20 years, nobody's going to go to Graceland and it's going to disappear. That's, that's the reality of it. Um, when I look at my stats on here, I could see the ages of people, the mixture of uh, man versus woman, country versus country, you know, where everything comes from. The people that watch my videos fall into 45 to 65 on average. That's the vast majority of them. Now, there's other ones, but the biggest group is that group. That group in 20 years is going to age out. You know, 45 in 20 years is going to be 65. That's not real old, but you know what I'm saying. You may have 30 years. But if we don't get kids involved in this um, and get them excited about the history then uh, this whole thing is going to go away. And I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, the, uh, and it was actually Trey that brought my, that my, to my attention. He was like, man, the kids are going to watch this and they're going to do just like he did. And they're going to start Googling Elvis. And that's when they see the spa guy videos and the Ashley drew videos and the Trey videos. And that's when they, they start figuring out we've had people that were not really that Elvis fans that ran across a video, saw what we did and kind of went, you know what, I'm interested in this. Next thing you know, they're giant Elvis fans. So we're creating new Elvis fans. And that's really what we want to do. We want to capture the um, uh, capture the history. And I see you there, Lynn, from UK. Um, we want to capture the history, but we also want to get people uh, involved in... Um, Lord, I'm asking so many questions. Uh, we want to get people involved in in wanting to. I think if you can get somebody hooked by getting them to go, well, let me learn about that. Trey said the thing that got him uh, interested in Elvis was he saw a video, and I know I'm saying ah a lot, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm used to turning my camera on and going, and this is is a, a lot different. Uh, Trey said that he watched a video where Elvis was at the uh, um, the International or the Hilton, maybe in the Hilton at the time, and he kissed, what was that number, Trey? Was it 42 women in 60 seconds or, or something like that? And he said, I got to learn about this guy. <laughs> and uh, that got him hooked, and he became an Elvis fan. And he um, – uh, is it 43, Tom? And uh, it, was, it was something – he just said, hey, this guy's cool, and I want to be just like him. I want to learn about him. Okay, so Trey says it's 42 and two and a half minutes. 
And uh, he said when he kissed all the girls, he became a fan. And uh, Bob is saying, looking forward to your following up on the ambulance driver. So uh, the, both ambulance drivers have passed away. One of them, uh, Charles uh, Crosby, passed away in South America. And you know, a lot of y'all know the story that he was pushed out of an airplane. I, do, I don't believe that that's true. I think he was killed in an auto accident. But we are working on um, that information. We're trying to figure out, I, let, I'll say this, I've reached out to family. And so I'm working with family about that story. Now, Ulysses Jones passed away young as well. He was 59 from memory when he passed, but he became a, a Tennessee state senator. He actually started, he worked in the government. Now, something that's interesting is if you ever go to the, uh, to the Memphis Memorial Gardens, where Red West is buried. Sam Phillips is buried there as well. Uh, so where the main building is on the right side, behind it is a mausoleum with a bunch of graves. Sam is in the back of that. So, and if you leave the back of that and walk at a 45 degree angle to the closest graves, um, a Memphis Mafia member is right there. Um, uh, uh, come on, Billy. I had it in my mind and I've talked so much now it, uh, it left me. Um, Kim's husband, uh, come on, come on, come on. I'm starting to get tired. So I'm struggling a little bit. Um, it'll hit me in a minute. Anyway, he is right there in that plot. And then on the other end of that same plot is Ulysses Jones. So Elvis's ambulance driver is actually in the same plot in the cemetery with a Memphis mafia member. Um, Ashley's going to tell me. Richard Davis, thank you. Or uh, Ashley and, and Trey both. Richard Davis, I'm sorry, y'all. I could not pull it out to save my life. And I had it in my mind earlier. Um, and see, uh, Marcia Patterson says, that's me. You know, I told you I wasn't a huge Elvis fan, but Spy Guy information telling me about him made me more of a fan. And uh, Jeff Pope wants to know where Vester is buried. Vester and Cletus are buried in Forest hills where Elvis was buried originally. And I say forest hills, is it forest hills or forest lawn? Anyway, it's right off of Elvis Presley Boulevard. When you pull in the main gate there, the funeral home is to your left. If you stop right there, there's a, a marker that separates that, that plot. The, you know, there's a big round thing full of graves. There's a marker right there that says like A this way and B this way, to the right of that is Aunt Delta, literally beside that marker. And then if you drive back around to the other side, I did a video about uh, Vester, and I think I cover where that grave is at in that video. So if you if you put in Vester Presley and Spa Guy, it'll pull the video up. And I'm pretty sure that I show you, if you go to this tree and that, it's in that little plot, it'll tell you how to uh, get there. And Becky says that George Klein said Elvis lives as long as there's people who care. And that's why it's important to pass on Elvis to a younger generation. I take my granddaughter to Graceland every year. And my granddaughter is one year old. And if you don't think I have played plenty of uh, Elvis music for her to dance to, she loves to dance. And uh, Brandon Lawson is saying paramedic, not ambulance driver. They didn't have paramedics back then, buddy. They were called attendants at that point. Um, they didn't even have 911 in 1977, not in Memphis. And I actually was a uh, an EMT, uh, was what they were called, emergency. Um, uh, what, what? I went to school for it. What is it called? I, 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 I road rescue um, EMT, emergency medical technician. And uh, so there, you and I don't know where you live, but in the South, Paramedics are really, really high up. There's no EM. There's no EMTs. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you for uh, supporting us. Um, Elvis being Bob Joyce. What is your take on that? Bob Joyce, friends. I don't know Bob Joyce. Never met him in person. One day I may stop over there and try to meet him and, and set this thing to to rest. But Bob Joyce is not. Um, not Elvis. He's not old enough for one thing. 
And the second thing is, is unfortunately Elvis died August 16th, 1977. And I believe that that is, is accurate. Matt, thank you so much, brother. And look, guys, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I thank y'all so much for doing that kind of stuff, but you don't have to do those things. Um, but we do appreciate the support and just know that any, if you give funds in this kind of uh, situation, these, it will not be used for anything, but going and making videos and that kind of stuff. I won't use it for anything personal. I promise. Uh, John Burroughs, you know, John Burroughs is an interesting person. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all know about John. You know, I've wanted to, for the longest time, believe that Elvis faked his death. Um, I could make a video today that could convince you that Elvis Presley is alive. I could inversely make a video today to 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 convince you that Elvis is dead. I could go both. I could literally create enough evidence in both directions to convince you. Um, after speaking with family um, and people that were really close to him, and and becoming friends with them, and kind of off the record talking to people. I believe that Elvis passed August 16th, 1977. As much as I would love to believe that he lived, I don't think that that is accurate. In fact, my friend Bill Stovall that I filmed with in Newber, uh, ever since we were teenagers, we've had a running bet, uh, $20, that he bets Elvis is dead and I bet he was alive. So that's how much I believe that Elvis was alive. Not that $20 is a lot, but I'm just saying that that was kind of a running bet between us all. Um, John Burroughs is an interesting character. If you ever get a chance to listen, he's, and I've, I've bought a couple of John Burroughs books and he actually preaches and it's, and it does sound like Elvis. Um, but the books are very, very expensive and the preaching CDs are very expensive. I bought them because I wanted to investigate and see if by chance, um, By chance, um, Dean, I'm going to call you in just a little bit. Um, but I wanted to, I'm, I'm, all I'm going to say is this. The guy sounds, I mean, he sounds like Elvis. And he wrote a book. He wrote a series of books and are very expensive. The books are like 125, 150 bucks. And in those books, he tells, a, he tells the Elvis story kind of in parables which is intriguing. I have to admit it's intriguing, but you know what? There's a lot of very, very smart people out there that know how to create things that will attract people that want something to be so. You know, there's a, a yearning inside of people for a savior, if you will, or a savior to return. And I think a lot of people put that feeling into Elvis when that feeling should be reserved for Jesus. It's my personal opinion. And, uh, and that's not, I'm not taking a swipe at anybody. That's not at anybody in particular. So please don't be offended by, by that. Um, I just, I, you know, I don't know, but anyway, uh, he's an interesting character. Whoever wrote those books is interesting. If, if you look into it, but I, there again, I don't believe that that's Elvis either. Um, I think that Elvis passed away, just like uh, the family said. But, you know, if you watched um, Louise, when I asked her, she gave kind of an off-putting answer, you know. So, but anyway, uh, irregardless, if he is alive, we don't know where he's at. We can't talk to him, so it really doesn't benefit us one way or the other, does it? Um, I could say unequivocally that Bob Joyce is not Elvis. Um, and I could say unequivocally that, uh, John Burroughs is not Elvis, but I tell you what, he's a really good impersonator. You know, he really can sound like him, but so can 250,000 other people. Yeah. Ronnie McDowell is a good friend of mine and he's very, very good. 
And Dave Shires, you are not the Queen of England. Lucy Nick, somebody tell Lucy what's going on. <laughs> Dolly, that's a good point. If Elvis came back, there's a lot of people that he would kick their butts. Of course, most of them are passed by now. Uh, Chris, uh, man, I'm sorry. I, I, I won't comment on that, and that should tell you my comment. Well, and somebody brought up, you know, there's this thing out there. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so Garth Brooks lives... 15 miles from me. And you keep seeing all these news stories about him being the number one record seller in the world and that kind of stuff. And, and the, the thing that you need to know is Elvis's record selling career was what? 22, 23 years total. And some of those years he didn't sell very many records, the early years. Um, and, he only had that period of time. Garth has been selling records. Garth started what, 95, 2005 to uh, 2015. So he's been selling records longer at this point. Plus all the media, all the stuff. Now what you got to understand is, is it RIAA or RAII? I, may, I think it's RAII that keeps the records. They don't recognize the reason that that Garth is making that claim is in it's not true. Elvis has sold more records than anybody, um, but they have to base their record keeping off of the records that they can solidify. And Elvis was selling records back in the day when there was no computers. It's all handwritten stuff. They're not counting any of those records. So if you were to count all of the different stuff. Plus, um, I think the, uh, I know that Sam, it's, it's RIAA, Tom. Okay, good. Um, and I, look, I love Garth, uh, Matt, but he didn't sell more records than Elvis. Um, m my point to this is, yeah, Garth started l earlier than 89. He became real famous in 89, Brian. Um, Okay, so there's <laughs> somebody just texted me something that's that I'm sorry, Ohio guy. That's that's so crazy. I can't, I can't even go there. Um, oh, Recording Industry Association of America. Thank you, Debbie. Um, anyway, you got to consider that Elvis sold records. Then he sold, uh, and he probably sold reel to reel. Back in the day, he sold 45s, he sold 78s, then he sold uh, eight tracks, then he sold cassette, then he sold records again, and then he sold CDs, and then he sold uh, downloads. So people keep buying all that stuff and all those new formats. His sales, in my estimation, is about two billion, which is a long ways from. Um, from anyone's uh, even close. Um, so anyway, I hope that clears it. That clears it up. And look, I don't fault Garth for wanting that record. But um, and the other thing is, is they count every CD in a six CD box set, and they're right about that. If they do a if they do a box set with two CDs in it, and then they throw a free third one in it with one song on it, they count that as another unit. Uh, so. That's how they're, they're basically inflating their numbers. Elvis did it the old school way. Elvis is the number one selling artist of, of all time, period, hands down. And well, let's, let's just say it like this. Elvis sold so many records, they can't even count it. I think that's a fair way to say it, that nobody can count it. It's too many. They can count Garth's. <laughs> Uh, I have talked to June Juanico on the phone, Rainy. Uh, Trey and I went to Biloxi and filmed all of the June Juanico stuff. Uh, and we were all kinds of stuff was. And 
and did a lot of, um, and I see you, Scott, I'll do the Jim Reeves video. I've, man, I've just got so much more to get to, to finish it. Um, but we filmed all the Biloxi stuff. We've got a couple of things that we need to go back and get in Biloxi. We wanted to take Pat around and let her show us the stuff. But we also have some more stuff to film in, uh, in New Orleans. We have the person's phone number that owns the balcony that all the scenes were shot on in the balcony. And uh, they told us next time that we came to uh, New Orleans to call them and they would let us up in the apartment so we could film and film out on the balcony. So I want to, I'm reserving all of the New Orleans stuff until I get that footage. I could probably go ahead and do the Biloxi video and I may go ahead and do that. We'll just save the Pat stuff for later. How's that sound, Trey? No, Stu, there will never be another Elvis, my friend. He is, um, He's something else. I mean, here we are in uh, Corey Johnson. You're in Columbia. You know, I'm not far from you, brother. Let's see. What's the reason they have the top floor blocked off at Graceland? That is a great, that is a great question. And this, the answer is going to surprise you. Um, that was a, a happy accident for EPE. So I have become friends with someone and I know I'm moving around a lot, y'all. I'm sorry. It's just weird talking to a computer screen. Um, and I'm not getting any response from it. I'm just talking. Um, I don't know how you did it actually, but you did good. So this guy worked for EPE when they first opened, he was a tour guide and he got to do a lot of things on the inside, even got to go upstairs and do a lot of stuff. And, he said that when they were opening the house, that they had an engineering firm come in and assess whether the house could handle 3,000 people walking through it every day. And they assessed that the main floor could take it, the basement could take it, the top floor could not take it. So they said, now you can reinforce the top floor and you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to add some metal structure to it. You're going to have to do this and this and this to be able to make it uh, uh, structurally sound enough to be able to handle that kind of traffic. Well, they didn't have the funds to do it and they didn't have the time to do it. So they elected not to do that. And what they did was just didn't show that area. Now, since then, legend has it that that area was reserved because they're being um, respectful to Elvis's privacy and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't think that that's the case. I think that that what I said is the reason that you can't go upstairs. But I would be willing to bet you because their numbers are falling. I'd be willing to bet you in the next five years that you will be able to go upstairs if you have enough money. It might be 10 people a day at $1,000 a head or something like that. Uh, but there will come a time when you will be able to go upstairs. They, they'll never do the main tour through there. Um, but I believe that they will... Um, that they will open it and it's going to be a high dollar. It'd be a high ticket item, but you know what? There's people that can pay it. That's why they can charge what they charge because there's some people that can't pay it, but there's a lot of people that can pay it. And when, uh, as long as people are paying those prices, they're going to leave the prices where they are, you know? So if you don't go at those prices, they have to drop them. Okay, so the DNA stuff you're working on, Billy, can you respond yet? Uh, and Joey Mack, yes, they have the, the funds to re reinforce the floors now, but man, that would be, you know how intrusive that would be? Uh, and I saw a thing about Patrick go by, but guys, I didn't get a chance to read it. So type that question again. I just I had a question in my mind and these things are going by so fast. Did y'all catch that question? Julie said she'd refinance her house to see upstairs. I don't think it'd be that much, Julie, but, but it could be a lot. 
But, you know, look, I would be happy with just a, oh, I know what the question was. They were asking about the DNA test. So the DNA test is in process as we speak. Um, now, the outcome of the DNA test will determine um, Trey is saying somebody said something about Biba. Biba couldn't carry Elvis's guitar strap, you know. Um, but anyway, um, the DNA thing is in process as we speak. It's going to take a few more weeks to to get it all done. Thank you, Free Free Tob. I, I see you there. Um, but I cannot divulge what it's about. If if this thing comes back to be true, it is giant. If it comes back to be false, it's a great story. So I'm going to tell the story either direction. Uh, one direction is just giant, and one direction is just another spy guy story in Ashley Drew. And, uh, and that's pretty much that. Oh, so they're saying I can scroll my chat. I didn't know that. Y'all, well, heck, I'm learning things every day. You're right. I can scroll back. Look at that. Yeah, photos of upstairs will be cool. They still have the $28 ticket. Yes, they do. But, you know, guys, I think that they should, uh, they should build a replica of it. That would be good enough for most people because being in the exact room would be great, but I would love to just walk through it and see what it feels like and what it looks like. Um, Rob, the stable is not on the regular tour, in my opinion, because of the logistics of getting people back there to the stable and out. Now, they could pave through the thing and all that, but there's just no easy way to get back there and get back out. Hello there, uh, Barney in New Zealand. Uh, the attendance has dropped slightly. I don't think it's a giant drop, but I think it's, you know, I would be guessing if I, if I speculated, I just saw a report that it had dropped. And Julie says that she agrees a replica would be great. And I think that doesn't necessarily have to be something that EPE does, by the way. Um, and we have something coming up. Somebody asked me something about Patrick earlier, the super fan. Um, and I'm sorry, the question went by so fast. Well, you know what? I can scroll back. But boy, it's way back. Um, we've got an announcement that we will... I can't tell you anything right now. It will only let me go back so far. It won't let me go back that far. So um, I, I can't tell you, I shouldn't even say anything, but, but if this thing comes, to, what we're talking about doing comes to fruition, uh, it'll be huge and we'll be depending on, um, <laughs> I hate to answer that, Mika. Um, I can answer part of it, Mika. Um, so the, I'll answer part of that. That's, that's a good point. Um, anyway, we've got something cooking that if it happens to, um, come to fruition, of course, y'all will be the first to know, but it'll be giant. Uh, Chris Hamilton's asking, what are my thoughts on the insurance policies that were never cashed in? And my, what I would say to that is what insurance policies and can you prove that they were never cashed in? Um, I would speculate that the answer to that is no. That's just a, another fable in the Elvis world where people say stuff and, and other people pick up on it and then it becomes truth and they keep regurgitating it. I don't believe that that is, is, is accurate. Um, that, the insurance policies were not cashed. In fact, uh, I, I have seen one document to the contrary of that. Um, so thank you so much, Benton. Let's see any plans to put your stuff on DVD. 
Joey, I have somebody that I'm talking to about that, about doing like a box set. So if anybody's interested in that, put it on here and just let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. That boggles my mind that people would, would want to do that because you can watch them for free right here on YouTube. But I have had people say, no, I want to own it in my collection. Um, and so I understand that from a collection standpoint. And uh, so that's something that I would be uh, probably working on doing in the future. Will you be doing a story on the pink convertible Cadillac that was sold to Gladys's friend? I don't know about that story. Um, okay, Larry Geller thoughts. That's what Mika was getting me about. So Larry Geller, there's several people asking about that. So Larry Geller, um, in Priscilla's book, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Ashley, but I think I'm right. Uh, she talks about the Colonel making Elvis take those books out behind where the giant Jesus is, where in the meditation gardens behind that is a wishing well. And that the Colonel instructed Elvis and Priscilla to take those books out and throw them in that wishing well and burn them. I believe that is, is a correct assessment of that story. Um, and my thing with Larry Geller is uh, I believe that he is slightly MBE and that anybody that is trying to get Elvis off the path with Jesus, I have a problem with. And I believe that that is exactly what he was doing. He was introducing Elvis to all these other things to confuse him. And I, I honestly just don't care for that. Um, and that's all I will say on that subject. And I hope that at least gives y'all, is that good enough, Mika? And uh, <laughs> people are texting me <laughs> as we go. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for answering, Billy. Oh, man, this is the best true Elvis blog in the world. Thank you, Chris Hamilton. Yeah, box set and bonus footage. Okay, so that's a good point right there, Mama T. Um, something that Patreon does, and look, guys, I'm, I'm just being straight up. It's just like this. I don't really know how to do this. Uh, Patreon is a format where there's some things that I film. Uh, hey, hello, Karen, Karen from Australia. Um, I mean, yeah, from Australia. Stephen, I have not personally talked to Ginger yet, but uh, very soon. Um, I've communicated with Ginger, let's just say that. I am not scared of the coronavirus. No, I'm not. Hello from Belgium. I've been to Belgium. It's a, a beautiful place. I took the train through going to Paris. So I got off of my, uh, boy, it's so easy to get sidetracked here. There's so many things happen at one time. Tell me what I was talking about, y'all. 50 amp on the breaker size. Richard from Scotland, welcome. Yeah, Elvis was into numerology. I, I'm not sure that I agree with that. Thank you, Beth, Patreon. And uh, so, you know, you know, the, the Bible talks about the fear of God. And, you know, I have a fear of God. I don't like to get too far away from that Bible. I know that it is the, the, the true, the one true word. And I don't like to step too far away from that. So uh, I'll le just leave that there. So Patreon, thank you, Tresia. Patreon offers a thing where I can do like, I can, it's, from what I understand, it's this, where you can do, you can pledge like $5 a month or, $10 a month or whatever it is. And I can do things where um, in some of the, I can, I can allow you to see different things. And what I'm saying is there's some things that I go film that I can't just put on YouTube. Um, but I could take those things and make it a video of exclusivity for 
people in a club or in a group a group does that make sense like in patreon um and so i've, I've really just honestly got to learn how it works and uh jane says she'd like to see ted again and uh tennessee ted is awesome um and uh do i think i will ever interview linda thompson indeed i do have i dumpster dived yes i have i'm not too proud to dumpster dive um, I've jumped fences, jumped into dumpsters, all kinds of stuff. Yes. Eventually I will do some more stuff with Tennessee, Ted. Absolutely. Thank you, David, Dave Shires. Um, so I'll have to work out this Patreon thing. I really, um, as I mentioned, I really am not a hundred percent sure how it works but I will work on that and, uh, and try to understand it and try to do some special things that I can't just share with the public. Um, I think that would be a, a fair assessment. Um, um, and, um, I had to, he's begging. Okay. I, I see that. Mick. I, I hadn't seen that. Um, I have no idea how long we've been doing this. Wow. Hour and 46 minutes. Um, and I don't want to hold you guys up. How about if we t call Dean Nicopolis? Let's call Dean and see what he has to say. For you that don't know, Dean was uh, taught Elvis how to play racquetball. And he worked for Elvis as his valet for about five years. So he's very, very knowledgeable about those things. What's happening, Dean? I've got you. You're on. Uh, you're on the Facebook. I mean, what am I saying on the YouTube? Oh, okay. Can you okay. hear him, guys? Go ahead and talk, Dean. We on? Yeah, go ahead. How you guys doing? <laughs> Matt Ward said, "Tell you not to cuss." Who said that? Matt Ward, one of one of the guys on here. Um, so. What's been going on with you, Dean? Man, just uh, selling cars and making spices and uh, listening to your stuff. Yes, sir. So tell us that's about very, your spices. Very interesting. Well, man, that's cool. I'm going to get you over close to the mic. Tell them about your spices. Well, we're making spices right now. We, we decided to make a southern Greek spice, me and my partner, and we're going to be making like uh, Greek seasoning, garlic butter, barbecue rubs, hot wing seasonings, and uh, we're going to put it online and sell it at a reasonable price. And it's my dad and mom, you know, being from a background from restaurant business, we sort of came up with some new, new little kicks and uh, we put those in our meatballs. Tell us a little about the meatballs, Billy. Did you like them? Yeah, they were fantastic. We got to we gotta get together and do that. Wayne, uh, go ahead and type your question out and I'll ask you. Um, so something that we've talked about, friends, we, this is not something we've set up at all. I had no idea the team was going to call tonight. Uh, but we've talked about maybe doing an event at Elvis Week where uh, Dean speaks and we make that special uh, 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 hamburger, steak. hamburger steak that his mom would make for Elvis. And if uh, y'all would be interested in something like that, let us know if you're going to be at Elvis Week. You know, we want to see if there's a um, some interest in it before we would try to set up something like that. But I don't know if, if most of y'all, I think, would have uh, probably watched the video where we talk about um, and we actually sample that. And Ashley Drew and Trey were with us. That was that was a banner day right there, my friend. We had a good time, didn't we? Yeah, we really did. But. Uh... Have they got any questions or anything? Or yeah, they're asking they what dealership you own. <laughs> I wish I owned one. I wouldn't be doing that, right? Um, I'm a Sunrise Wolf Chase. And, and you uh, you sell GMC? Yeah, I sell GMC trucks. I sell Buick. I sell anything. Any, any kind of car, really, dude. We sell everything. I get anything used on new. Uh, also sell, uh, best way to do it, I, I guess the number that number would be 901 333 8000 if they ever want to. I need a vehicle. Okay. That sounds but, cool. Uh, so somebody's got a question here. Okay. 
let's see. Did you? It says, did you let Elvis win when you were playing racquetball all the time? <laughs> did I let him win? Yeah, I was on his team, so he 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 won ninety five percent of the time. <laughs> Because you, you're now. See, you were an award-winning player um, before you ever started teaching Elvis, right? Well, I guess you know I was like fifth in the country for my age. Won the national championship at Memphis State when I was, you know, and taught him how to play. And we, when we built the court, actually, we built the court, and I'd have a couple of the pros come over and play. You know, yeah, and they got to put they liked all that and. Uh, Elvis really liked it. The good thing about Elvis is we took him to a couple places where it was just us, and we had a great time, you know. Uh, but he wanted to make sure the guys were there, so that's why we always had to go somewhere else. He didn't want to just be a... That's the thing about Elvis. He always looked after everybody, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And y'all played at a lot of different clubs around town. You played at Memphis State, right? Right. We actually played at Memphis State. We played at the... Uh, we played at since we played. I, we played at least six or seven places in Memphis. We got Tanner Building uh, back in the day, and uh, it was really funny. Elvis just took over the, that guy's place. He'd go upstairs, and the guy would let him come over. Next thing you know, he's been taking over everything. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, he had a lot. Of fun. That was great exercise. I mean, we would play sometimes. I'd say four or five weeks in a row. You know and get out there and hit it. And uh, what made it fun, all the guys really enjoyed playing, I think. Most of them did. And, uh, you know, one time he hit he hit Esposito in the head one time, and Esposito had all that uh, spray on his hair, so it wouldn't mess it up. And he hit his hair, and that stuff stood straight up, and that was thought it was so funny. He was like, because that thing jumped up. 15 minutes getting his hair planted right. Next thing I know, he hits him with the ball, and that hair just goes poof. Straight up in there. And uh, Billy played a lot, too. Billy Smith, he got what he really liked it. And then he got his wife involved in it, and they liked it. And uh, we just had a good time playing. It was a lot of fun. I mean, Billy's really competitive, a lot more than you would think. Oh, they're all competitive. I mean, yeah. Billy Smith is real competitive. Yeah. I mean, that's what made it. So we actually had a softball team on tour. And uh, those guys didn't like losing. They didn't play the – we played the uh, band member but members of the roadies, whatever. And it was so much fun because our guys didn't want to lose. Dick Grove and all those guys, they didn't want to lose. And Sam, and we had a great time. I mean, Billy was, I think Dad played second base. It was funny how all these guys would go out there and play these positions. And, you know, we had a great time doing that. Steve Teresco wanted to know about when you went uh, to Hawaii in March of 77. Uh-huh, what you want to know? Just, and just, just uh, what it was like. Uh, I'll tell you what, what, what happened was, let's see, we went there, stayed at the Hilton, what was it, uh, what was it called, uh, I can't remember, the, the Hilton. Waikiki, or? No, nah, it was like the Rainbow Hilton, whatever it's called back then, and it was pretty cool because, you know, we would go eat breakfast and get everything, and we had a house down there, too, that we played touch football a lot. And, uh, you know, we'd all go over there because it was more quiet for Elvis. Elvis could go out and play football, and Elvis could go up there. He was a quarterback half the time throwing the football. So we had a we had a good time there. Then we went to the Luau's. Did a, we all always went to the Luau. And then we also, I think Rod Stewart was coming in, but some of them went, some of them stayed. Actually, a couple of them stayed with Elvis, and uh, some of the other people went to go listen to Rod Stewart as he was playing. And, uh, and we had a good time. I mean, you couldn't beat the weather. I mean, my, I think uh, there's pictures, I think, still. Remember those pictures, Billy? Yeah. And yeah, with him throwing the football in the backyard, it shows. Uh, yeah. So we had a great time doing that. And, and you know what? Actually, I was enjoyed it because he got away from it. But your sister took those pictures, right? Yeah. Kissy took them. Yeah. Uh, she took the pictures. And, uh, I mean, I, I didn't take a picture. I didn't know anything about all that stuff. I, you know, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, um, a guy's asking about your your TCB. He's saying uh -huh. that asking about Dean's TCB. Did Dean change the chain to twenty eight inches? Usually, the chain was twenty four inches. 
Yes, I did change it. I did change it. Okay. I wore it with me. I wore that in the cross when I played racquetball all the time. So it wouldn't. It was, went, you know, I changed that. I did change that. It's too. There's your answer right there, Wayne. And uh, Trey told said you need to tell the Lone Ranger story. The Lone Ranger. Well, that was uh, if you recall, um, we went to Colorado, and uh, we were out there probably for about a week, four or five days, and then Elvis asked if any of the guys wanted to take, pick up their wives and take the wives out here and girlfriends. And uh, about that time. Some of them brought their wives. I brought my dog, believe it or not. And uh, we were, uh, we'd go out at night about 2.30 in the morning and go down the ski slopes on uh, garbage tops, these little saucer tops, you know. And you had no control. You just go flying down there. And I told him, I said, it's about, about 2.30, 3 o'clock. I said, else I'm going in. I've had it. He said, well, everybody's going to go one more time, then we'll all go in. And I said, okay. So we did it. Next thing I know, I I hit a I hit a fence post. I thought I broke my leg, to be honest with you, but it was jammed. And Elvis rode in the ambulance with me. And when him and we get we went he's in the back with me and he's just talking to me, he's trying to keep me occupied, keep my mind thought, so I wouldn't he knew I was hurting. And uh, so we get to the we get down there, get to the hospital. And they look at it, and the lady looks at me, and she says, well, I don't think it's broke, yada, yada, everything's okay, he probably jammed it. And she said, you have your insurance card? And I gave her my insurance card, and it said, uh, that was Presley, a state. And anyway, but she looked at the insurance card, and I had a couple of guards, let's say a couple of guys were with me, and she looks over there, and Elvis is beside me, but Elvis has got the ski mask on. He never took, he kept the ski mask on the whole time. He didn't want nobody to know where we were. He was there. So she looks at him and she says, well, who are you? And he looked at her and he said, the Lone Ranger to you. <laughs> and we left that night just laughing and carrying on. They never knew it was him. And the reason why, realistically, because if you remember, was it President Ford's daughter? Yeah. She was, uh, she was staying down there too. Susan Ford, I think the name was, if I'm not mistaken. And we didn't want all that around us either because that was he had some good privacy back then, so that that was one of the times we had a good time doing that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Michael Landon was uh, our next door neighbor, uh, played on Bonanza. Wow, that's incredible, Little Joe. Yeah, Joe. But, uh, so that was that. He just Elvis had carried on with that and made a big. It was pretty funny. That was hilarious. Had, we had a good time. I mean, we did a lot of. He was a prankster. We played a lot of pranks on different people, and that's what made it fun. You know, the, the, just like, uh, I mean, there's so many stories we could tell. You just let me know one night we'll tell a bunch of them. I mean, there's different stories that it's hard to know what I've told you guys and what I haven't told you. you know yeah, what I mean? we'll have to uh, to get some more uh, on there for sure. And uh, when was the last time you were at the mansion? Man, the last time I was at the mansion, I want to say it was with you. It's been that long. I hadn't been there since then. Yeah. So that was. Uh, uh, you know, we, uh, in fact, when Dick and them came in town, and you and me and a couple guys, then we go to the uh, Mid South Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And I think I went the day before that. Uh, I tell you what, though, that Mid South Coliseum brought back some good memories, though. You know, that was pretty interesting, knowing, you know, when you, I looked up at that stage and I'm like, wow. You would have never thought that we did all the stuff we did. Everything was so fast, it seemed like, you know, when we were doing yeah. things. Well, and it's it, that you and Dick being able to kind of reminisce and and uh, all of those times, because he was he was your kind of like your boss at that time back then. You know, you were going to move over to be a, a, a bodyguard. Am I remembering that uh, yeah, right? They were us. Uh, yeah, I didn't, we didn't know that. I didn't even know they were doing that, to be honest with you, until um, all of us. They were telling me after everything that day had gone through, and Sam and them were telling me, but they were getting ready to move me into that position. And it's not because I'm big or anything, it was just because, uh, you know, you just got to keep it cool, you know, and try to keep an eye on everything. And, uh, but Elvis, I don't know, Elvis was, Elvis, the Colonel tried to get me to go with him and set up hotels with Sonny back in the day. 
and that was had no part of that. He didn't want me to leave and do that. Um, and that was pretty funny because that was sort of put his foot down, you know. And everybody asked about the colonel. Well, it was funny. One night, if I'm not mistaken, we were in Las Vegas. And I had just started. It was my first trip to Vegas, actually, working for Elvis. And uh, the colonel saw me, and he says, hey, I need you here tomorrow morning to put Elvis signs up all over the casino. Casino. And all the, you know, back then they did all that, and I didn't know. I said, sure. So I get out there, I work hard that morning. I come back, and I come back in Elvis' room at 3 o'clock that afternoon. He says, where have you been? I said, working. He said, okay, what are you doing? I said, working for the colonel, I guess. I'm putting signs up. He says, who writes your check? And I said, you did? He said, well, I suggest you don't do it again. So after that, I never helped him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess he just decided, you know, he didn't want him, you know, taken in. Because uh, I'll never forget that. In fact, the colonel took me to breakfast that day. And he put, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had a handful of uh, chips. And he put those chips on the table. And every time he had to ask for tea, coffee, hot food or anything, he would pull a couple of chips away from the waitress's tip. And whatever was left was her tip. That's how he did it. <laughs> and that's pretty interesting, I thought, you know. And then, uh, and then you know, that DVD that, that we did, Billy, with yeah. Trey? Yeah. And but, I mean, I'll go over that real quick because it was a lot of fun. What yeah. happened was uh, how, how we got to that point where he was like, announcing, you know, on the stage. He, uh, he had taken me backstage, and we were walking backstage through the, we went through the hotel part, I said, not the hotel, but we went through the kitchen. And when we went through the kitchen, uh, we went through the kitchen, and then uh, after we went through the kitchen, he asked me, I was asked me, he said, uh, what song do you want me to sing tonight? That's it. And I went, I was like a deer in headlights, and I said, uh, I told him, suspicious minds. And he looked at me and said, okay. And I didn't have no idea he was going to actually introduce me and all that. So we went, I got to the front row and they sat down. They sang, I know, halfway through the song. And that's when he kicked in and said, uh, you know, I got a special in the audience. And he, he introduced me in the audience and I was his racquetball instructor and proceeded to say he forgot my name. Like, was it Dean or Dino? He kept saying that the doctor's son. Mm-hmm. And he said, he said that uh, I told him I'd say suspicious mind tonight if if he would put a little white jumpsuit on and take karate with me. Which I never even mentioned karate. That just <laughs> came out of Elvis. <laughs> you know. And uh, so that, that's how that DVD got started because it, it was actually Elvis uh, saying all that stuff, which was pretty interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that was, that was him live talking. So let me give, uh, Trey just put up that how to get that DVD is email deansdvd at gmail.com and you'll get in touch with Trey and then he can mail that DVD out for you. And friends, we'll, we'll film with Dean soon. Uh, and, and, uh, he's got something he's working on. Is your, uh, is your spice website up yet? No, uh, it, it should be up, uh, in, I know y'all are getting really close. Okay. Well, when that happens, of we'll course, just, let me know, and, it, and I'll make sure that uh, they know. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be something that uh, we're going to even actually get with you. You're going to do a couple cooking things and show them how to do things. Yeah, exactly. We'll, have, we'll do that, and I think that'll be really cool, showing the spices and stuff like that. And we'll have a surprise coming a little later. We'll get together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, if there's any questions, y'all, just uh, I've got uh, two more Billy, questions. Billy can, Billy can uh, let me let me see if I can answer any questions. Yeah, I've know. got two more, and then I'll let you go. Um, okay. And I know, I actually know the answer to this question. When was the last time you were at Graceland when Elvis? And let me answer it before you answer it. When Elvis was alive. Okay. So I'm going to say that you were there on the 13th. Would have been the last day. Um. Well, it's even worse than that. I'd gone, I'd gone to Florida for a week. Oh, I didn't realize it was and a week. I, I thought it was just three days. I knew you were out of town. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it was, a, it was, many, it was, many, it was about like that. And uh, but it's been that long since I've been. I hadn't been there. And uh, the last time I saw him was when I was going out for just before I went out of town. Yeah. To go to the beach. And uh, I think it was about three or four days, you know. 
And uh, but we went to Fort Walton Beach, and then when uh, I got back in town, we actually that's when we went to the mall trying to find that pull worker. You know what a pull worker is, yeah. you know, where you pull one way, pulls the other way. And uh, that's something that I was going. We would get with Elvis, we have to start doing some stuff like that. That's pretty. That bonus was a lot of fun. He could do a lot with it. And uh, that was the very last time. Of, uh, that's why it all was so crazy. Yeah. I mean, I can honestly tell you, when I was sitting at the uh, mall, and when I heard that on the intercom, it, you know, I, I honestly thought it was his daddy. I didn't think it was Elvis, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, uh, and then, um, you know, just different things. You, if you guys got any other questions? Yeah, one more. Yeah, Did you know Priscilla? Yeah, what you got? Did you know Priscilla? Yeah, I met, I met Priscilla. I didn't hang with Priscilla. Priscilla at all, you know, I just met her uh, a couple times, that was it, I mean, I really didn't. So when did you start with up. Elvis full time? 75. Okay, so that was way after uh, they, yeah, she they was gone. gone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I met Priscilla in 66 or 67 with my dad, my dad took us up, we were over there, and he wanted to introduce us to Elvis or something, and, that, and that's when she was there, I think, and that was really yeah. quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they had just gotten married. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I knew Lisa good because I would take her out and do things with her, you know. I mean, in fact, my father was going to get in trouble when I took her to the skating rink when I told him that she wasn't, she told all the people she was Elvis, you know. And I said, no, nah, she's not. She just, she wishes she was. And she went back to her daddy that. And I'm going, oh my gosh. But no, that was just why. Because, you know, I didn't want to, I was crazy people. We didn't know who was crazy and who went back yeah, then. Exactly. You know, that's the funny thing about it. And, I mean, we get on this thing, talk all day about cars he bought, cars he didn't buy, and cycles and stuff. I mean, we did a lot of fun things. I mean, Elvis was a prankster, but he'd get on there and have his fun. And um, that's what made it fun. I mean, a lot of the guys, were, they were a lot of fun. You know, you, know, you get Billy and we had some great times at the house, sitting up there, you know, just kidding and carrying on. And uh, I can tell you this, on the airplane, we would play either hearts or spades or backgammon or something like that back then. That's how we, when we traveled, you know, that's what we did. We get on that Lisa Marine and just play stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't trying to get nosy with you, on, but on that, we, I never forget when he, he bought that, those VHS, we had all those Mike Python movies and Pink Panthers tapes. And yeah. We watched, and I was love to watch that over and over. On the airplane. Yeah, on, the, on the Lisa Marie, uh-huh. That's what I was saying. He had more. He had that for most people have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. He was always ahead. Ahead of the well, curve. think about it. He had Mountain Valley water, right? Well, he had bottled water before people knew what bottled water really was. That is true. <laughs> that is I true. Mean, but, uh, well, you got a great show. I didn't mean to bother you. I'm oh, no, man. I, I appreciate you calling, Dean. And look, I'll talk to you soon, <laughs> bro. Anything you need. Yeah, call him back to me if you need to. I can answer anything for you. Just let me know, okay? Yeah. Are you on Facebook at all, Dean? Uh, very little, very little. But uh, do you have a... It, but I'm gonna get with, uh, I think what I'm going to do is, is get with you, and we're going to get a, a new Facebook page. Oh, okay. And, uh, and we can set something up together. And uh, that way, if they got questions, we'll both be on there and try, and we can all figure out how to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that it's sounds fun. good. Fun. Okay. All right. right. Appreciate all you, right. man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. you. Right, yes, sir. So that answers your question there, Kenneth. He doesn't have a Facebook yet, but he's, I'll, I'll help him get one. And um, so guys, we have gone quite a long time. And uh, hello, Kim, Kim Davis. I've been seeing you there, but while he was talking, I couldn't say anything. And, um, and we talked about where Richard was uh, there by Sam Phillips. And, uh, and in that same plot, you may not even know that, um, Ulysses Jones, the ambulance driver that became a state senator, is in that same plot on the other end. Um, great to see you on here. So uh, Trey is saying that Dean does have a page on Facebook. <laughs> I don't think he's a big tech guy. So, was there a TV in the jungle room? Yes, indeed, it was. It was a one of those uh, big projection type TVs that had the three lights, the green, the red, and the blue light. Uh, 
Dean, Stephen, we can talk about that uh, when I talk to you tomorrow. Hey, I'm tight. I'm tight in a banjo string, Joseph. Uh, the bike episode, Gertie, I'm going to say is supposed to be out. They said in March and Melissa, we, if time permits, we'll try to do a live stream. What we may try to do since this, this has gone so well, what we may try to do is a live stream and try to do it regularly, maybe every Wednesday or every other Wednesday, but make it short. And what I'm saying is like do an hour. We've gone now for two hours and 10 minutes. And look, I could sit here and talk all night, but I don't want to tell you everything I know tonight. Yeah, projection drop down is what Matt Ward says. Brian, I, I think you, um, it, it, time has flown by. It doesn't seem like two hours. And Becky, I see you're from North Carolina. Good night. And I know a lot of you people are over in the UK, so it's really early morning. Yeah, very few people had those TVs. Elvis was always ahead of the curve on that stuff. Uh, for one thing, he was with RCA, so he always got the latest and greatest. And if he shot a TV out, he'd just call him and he'd just bring him another one. Um, he never shot a... Uh, a big screen TV that I know of, but he sure shot some other ones. The Graceland movie. Will you do another Audubon segment when it's finished? Steven, you've got some really good questions. Um, yeah, I mean, I have an ins I have an insider that could get me in the house, but he was struggling getting me in the house when, um, when they, it was under construction. Now, once the house is finished, I think he can get, uh, get me in there anytime. And yep, Jay, there are a lot of Elvis fans. So the Audubon thing, I've learned more about it since I went in there and actually went in the house. And I'll tell you, if you watch the, um, if you watch the, the video where I actually go in the house, I was so shocked that I was in the house. <laughs> I was running through the house filming because I was afraid they were going to throw me out at any time. So I actually went in and filmed and then went outside and then came in and filmed again and slowed down. I still didn't slow down enough. I was on pure adrenaline at that point. And, um, and, um, So that's why the footage is, is a lot of that. I try my best to hold that camera steady, but when I'm excited, I just could not believe I was standing in there because uh, I had been dreaming about going in that house for, for as long as I can remember. And I was now physically inside the building and trying to take it all in and trying to understand how the room's laid out. And then I was able to talk to Jim Monico and Pat which both stayed at the Audubon house. And Pat is the one that told me that when you walk in the front door, you turn to the right. And that's where that photo with Elvis and Billy Smith, when he was a little boy with Vernon behind Elvis, Elvis is on the phone standing in the swim trunks and Vernon is behind Elvis uh, shaving or washing his face in the sink. If you go down that little hallway and turn to the right, that was Elvis's, room that you see with the two single beds. There's a bathroom there, but if you come back and go down the hallway, there's a bedroom, bedroom, big bedroom in the back. So not the first bedroom, but the second bedroom is where that, that bumper pool table was. If you've ever seen those photographs, that bumper pool table was in that room and that's per pat. And they actually stayed in the, um, so Mike Curb donated the house, Roger, to uh, Rhodes College, by the way. Um, and I would love to to interview Mike Curb about that. Um, yeah, the Jim Reeves mansion uh, or uh, museum was was in Madison. It's where the uh, 
the Home Depot is now. I actually went in there and, and back before I was filming and just because it was abandoned and I saw something in there that I could kick myself for not getting. On the bathrooms, it said, uh, gentleman Jim and lady, whatever Jim's wife's name, I can't remember what it was. And they were on the bathrooms. I'm sure when the buildings got torn down, that stuff just went to the dump. That would be cool pieces to have. Now, Jim was, was not alive when those were put there, but it was still uh, very cool. Do I know when Billy Stanley's film will be done? That is that is uh, still in the very beginning of the uh, production. So it's not even in production yet. They're in the, in the screenwriting phases at this point. Ellen, I will tell you the next time that we stream. Um, uh, and like I say, we may try to, to, to do it. You know, I don't know about y'all. Wednesdays is a good day for me, but a lot of people go to church on Wednesday night. My church only has service the first Wednesday of every month and then the rest of it. But uh, what, what we do uh, is on that Wednesday, we will watch it from home. We'll do basically what we're doing right here. Our pastor does it from his house. He, he live streams and uh, Clay Baggett, Pastor Clay Baggett. Any plans to try to interview Kathy Westmoreland? She was there on the last tours. Yes, she lives in Las Vegas. And I found out the other day that the bass player that played on my record his wife is Kathy Westmoreland's sister, and I did not know that. So uh, the next time I go out there, I will try to reach out to her. Do I plan on doing more on Circle G? That's Chris Robinson. Well, Chris, I don't know. There's really not much else to tell. Um to be honest, the, you know, I've done the drone. I haven't gone in the house. Uh, some other people have been lucky enough to get in the house. I've never, but it's persistence. You know, I think if I go enough, eventually I'll get in there, but now I know people that know people that own it. So I think I'm probably at a point where, um, I can, I would love to go in the house because I did the video. If y'all didn't see it, uh, I'll bring it back up in the next week or two. Jack Adams Jr., his dad is the one that sold the house and the land to Elvis. And they had photos of the house where his mother was a like a, uh, a very successful interior decorator and the house was actually featured in magazines. So he had photos of the house in the magazines and that kind of stuff. Um, so I would love to be able to go in the house and kind of compare it to those photos and understand the layout of the house. Will I ever interview Lisa Marie or Priscilla? Well, I mean, that's that's like saying, would I, I interview um, the president? Certainly I would, if the president would allow me to interview him, I would, uh, of course, interview him. Um, that's... I'm not, I, I would say that that is probably something in the future. I'm working on interviewing. Um, I don't know if I should, should say this or tell this, but I'm working on interviewing uh, uh, Angie Marchese uh, because I think Angie's story is very, 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 very interesting. And I think most people don't know Angie's story. And, and I'm not even going to divulge any of it here because it's just too incredible. Um, but I, I have uh, put in a request to to interview Angie, and hopefully that will come to fruition, uh, where she can tell her story and tell us about uh, how she ended up being the vice president of archives at Elvis Presley Enterprises. She did not start out as the vice president of, of uh, archives, which is pretty incredible that she worked her way up to where she's at now. And the other thing is. Uh, a lot of you may not know that her team is so good that they were asked to curate uh, Prince's collection. When he passed away, her team went in and did the Prince collection. So when you go to uh, up there, 
to where Prince's house is to his museum, they were responsible for that as well. That's how good they are. They're being called out to do other real famous people's collections. And uh, which is, uh, I, I think is pretty telling about how good they are at, uh, at what they do. Uh, France, Francisco, Francesca Greco, Francesco. I'm sorry, I'm probably ruining your name, but your Aunt Carrie got kissed by Elvis in 1975. That's good, but you know, uh, Francesco, we have just determined earlier that 42 girls every two and a half minutes got kissed. So she's on a list of what, I don't know, uh, 2,000 ladies. <laughs> and I'm not diminishing her getting kissed. I just think it's funny when you think about that. Um, I don't know uh, what, you know, the Gates of Graceland, they were rocking along there for a little while, and then they hadn't put out anything in a year. My video will be the first thing that they put out in about a year, and I hope that they will start back. But you know, I, I think they've got other things that they are that they're tending to, and they really don't have time. And I would love to help them with that. <laughs> So that's why when that video comes out, y'all bombard them and say, hey, we know somebody that can can help help y'all with this. I did not know there was another cash movie coming out. And uh, Bob is saying he would like for me to interview James Burton and Donnie Sumner. Um, you know, I would gladly interview James, but man, and this is not a this has nothing to do with James, what I'm gonna say. Um, he's been interviewed to death. You know, there's some guys that have just been just interview, 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 interview. And at some point they have nothing new to bring to the table. And that's not that I'm not talking about James specifically. I'm, I interviewed the fringe people, the print, the people that um, that most people have never heard of. That's who I'm interested in. And uh, but now, if, I mean, if he agreed to an interview, of course, I would do it. And Donnie Sumner, I've actually asked Donnie, and he just doesn't seem to be interested. I've run into him many times. We have many mutual friends, and he just doesn't appear to be interested in it, which is great. But I really would love for Donnie to tell his story about um, about why he left the Elvis tour. I think it's an interesting story that most people don't know. He left the Elvis tour in 76 uh, from my memory and, uh, and he did it willfully and intentionally. Um, Ang Ang asked, and uh, well, then you above that and the Griffith video, we have many more that we filmed that I haven't even edited yet about Andy Griffith stuff. Ang, ang, the Jerry Lee thing, I actually filmed at Jerry Lee's house down in Mississippi and met with Jerry Lee's son, Jerry Lee the third. Um, but Jerry wasn't there at the time. But, uh, you know, same thing. I would gladly interview him if he agreed to it. Um, I just I've never been able to get him to agree to it. And yeah, uh, somebody's saying Jerry Schilling. I would like to uh, interview Jerry Schilling. Uh, Zach, I have interviewed Marion. Uh, she is MBE to the nth. And I'm being nice, but that's what I believe. Ashley, I thought you had, had gone away. I'm sorry this has taken so long. And Trey is a big Andy Griffith fan, and he's the one that that uh, orchestrated all of the um, filming of the Andy Griffith episodes and that kind of stuff. Jerry's asking about uh, Scotty Moore's Echo Sonic amplifier, what I call the Ray Butts amp. Um, I actually played through that amp, believe it or not, Jerry, and I tried to sell it for, for Scotty. That was one of the items that uh that i was trying to broker for scotty but it was such an expensive item we never did find a buyer but i did work on it 
we did sell some things to the prime minister of Japan. Um, I sold for Scotty through the prime minister's brother, but unfortunately I never sold the Echo Sonic, but there's a story. You could look it up on Google. The guy did buy the Echo Sonic amp from the family. Um, and, but it doesn't say how much he paid for it. Alstrada is indeed in Alaska, and Alstrada will not talk. I have asked and asked. Rachel, I do not know why Millie was replaced with Kathy. But that'd be a great question for Kathy. Trey is saying he's got a video coming up. Um, where the day he met Andy Griffith, which will be a great one. And Ashley Drew is back. She had to eat supper. She's on California time, if y'all don't know. She decided to just stay on Cali time. They call it that, y'all realize, in California, Cali time. Marcia's asking where your page is, Trey. Don is saying he loves Ashley's live stream last night. I thought she has done a fantastic job. And Tom's saying he thinks he heard Scotty say, I think that amp got sold uh, just before Scotty died, maybe a year or two. And 100000 is a low number on that amp, I think, but that's probably about right. I know that DJ sold his drums to um, Charlie Watts from the Rolling Stones for 100000 so although that is a uh a lot of money that's still a low number for the amp that was at um a lot of the uh a whole lot of the uh elvis concerts on the records and that kind of stuff it's pretty pretty amazing sarah's asking me about the colonel well um, Sarah, I, I actually have filmed a, a lot of Colonel stuff over in, you know, he was from the Netherlands, from Holland. And I filmed, I've actually been to his hometown, filmed where his house was, where he was born at, filmed where he got on the ship to come to America. I've just never edited that stuff and put it out. I need to go ahead and do it and finish it. I've got so many stories I've never even told. Um, but it's just, it takes time to tell things right, to get them right. Um, but, you know, you'll, one thing you'll learn about me is I'm a fan of everybody. Um, none of us were there. Um, so I really can't judge a person, the decisions that they make, because we don't know all the factors in a, in a decision. I will say that I, that I firmly believe that without the Colonel, there would be no Elvis. Um, that although Elvis was a phenomenon, it required the Colonel to, to bring that phenomenon to the world in the way that he did it to make him where here we are 42 years later, still talking about him. Uh, did the Colonel do everything perfect? No, absolutely not. But I didn't either. And you haven't either. So, um, he made mistakes along the way. There's some things that could have been changed and there's all kinds of, there's a lot of speculation about um, things like why Elvis never played in Europe. You know, it was because the Colonel couldn't get a passport. And I, I simply don't think that that is the case. Um, the Colonel personally knew presidents um, because he was the Colonel. He was rich. He was famous. He was Elvis's manager. So he knew people. He could have got a passport on a silver platter. I think the reason that Elvis never played Europe is for one thing, when would he have done it? They were selling concerts out like crazy. So if, and I say this to people all the time, if they would, people are going, well, he didn't, he didn't, he worked. I get this. Well, the Colonel worked Elvis to death. He, he made him sing too much. Those same people are the same ones going, well, why didn't Elvis go to Europe? Well, because it's, a lot more travel, it would have been a lot harder on him physically. And the people from Europe through companies like Strictly Elvis were bringing people here. You know, when they would play at the uh, uh, in Las Vegas at the Hilton at the showroom, probably uh, I'd say 25 or 30 percent of the people in the showroom were from Europe. 
So he was getting his European audience. And there's also the issue of there were not very many places. And I'm not saying there were no places, but there were not many places to play in Europe um, that were sizable enough to handle Elvis. Um, we, the infrastructure, in fact, the only reason we had places big enough were because of basketball uh, stadiums and football stadiums and that kind of stuff, probably mostly basketball. And one of the engineers I talked to, he lives here in town. I've talked to him about interviewing him. I've just never done it. I need to get off my butt and go do that. Um, the, he said that if it wasn't for Walt Disney, that they would have even been able to fly their equipment. You know how they fly equipment in, in concert venues now where they, they Elvis, the way they did it was they had a giant platform. They put all the speakers on it and then crank it up over his head. He said that the, the hook points for all that flying hardware were all the marks were done by Disney for the Disney on ice shows and that kind of stuff that were, that were making the same circuit. So actually Disney is, is very much involved in Elvis's success in those things, just as much as, as uh, some of the other, other people. And, you know, Manly Stranger says that um, that Elvis loved the Colonel, and I believe he did. I think he was very much like a a father figure to him. And when you've got something that works, you don't just veer off from it. You know, he was selling. If if he'd have quit selling out all every concert that he did in the United States, I would understand them trying to go somewhere else to create um, more uh, uh, audiences, but that's not the case. They were, and I'm not saying every single show was a sellout, but the vast majority of them were sellouts. And I, I just don't see the reason why he would have traveled uh, because it would have been hard on him physically. Uh, and then they're dealing with foreign governments and there's, there's a lot of other things. There's a lot of things that we didn't have to deal with in America that he would have had to deal with outside of America. And I honestly think that that's it, but I, I hope that I didn't go into too much about that. But, um, see now people are going to push me to get all my videos out. Y'all I've got so much footage. It would just blow your mind of stories. And, um, more spa guy repairs. Mike, I have those videos, brother, but they've moved over. Uh, my channel is called Spa Guy How To. And so I've moved all of those repair videos. I put in videos out, repair videos constantly, and they're on that channel. So if you go back to my channel here, you'll see a link over on the right that should take you to that channel. I just started doing this stuff over here and it took off. So I didn't want to mix uh, business with pleasure. So I created a new channel for the how to videos. Actually, I like doing these live videos. It's, it's very uh, interesting. And uh, I've talked for now for two hours and 30 minutes and it doesn't seem like that I've talked that long. Um, how did you like doing them? And Guitars Man saying that they could accommodate the Beatles and the Stones. Okay, so Guitar Man, when was he going to go over there? In between which concert tour? I, did, I said, I, I didn't say they didn't have places to play, but that's part of it. They would have had to go to uh, uh, Wembley, what was it Wembley Auditorium and play? Uh, 10 nights there and, that, and Elvis didn't like to stay in one place at, all the time. It just, that wasn't his jam. Deke Dickerson. That's exactly right. Thank you for that. Ornamente. Ornamente. That's who got the echo Sonic, the Ray Butts amp, which by the way, uh, uh, Scotty told me they made five of them and Scotty and, and Chet got two of them. Ashley said the time flies. It's fun, like hanging out with friends. It really is. Except for I'm that guy that just keeps talking and, and will not stop. <laughs> 
Did EPE give us credit for Elvis's old bike discovery? Indeed, they did. Vicky said, I'm the first YouTuber she has listened to this long. Thank you so much, Vicky. I hope that, you know, I don't want to tell y'all everything this time and then we don't have anything to talk about the next time. And Manly Stranger, um, there's, they, they, uh, let's see, who was it that told me this? Lamar, Lamar said that, that he was in the market for, and, and look, I'll divulge something that I believe is true. Um, I won't go into it because we'll do a video on it. I won't go into it real uh, heavy, but I do believe that at the very end before Elvis died, that he was getting ready to fire the Colonel and go to another manager that was going to take them uh, over to Europe. Uh, Lamar said that he was in the market for, he had, was actively looking for an airplane that could make the trip to buy. The, I don't think the 880 could make that trip, and I may be wrong about that, but they were they told me they were actively looking for, and, and I could ask, uh, I probably should have asked um, Ron Strauss about the, the, the distance that the airplane could make, because, because that would help, help us with that. But I was told that they, um, I don't know what kibitz means, uh, I was told that they um, were actively looking for an airplane that could make the over the overseas trip, the jump to the UK. And and the thing you got to understand is it wasn't just an airplane for just uh, Elvis. It would have been you know they would have to fly everybody over there. Uh, if you watch the video, the video with. Um, Bobby Ogden, Bobby talks about that there were several airplanes because people lived in LA, some people lived in Vegas, some people lived in uh, Memphis, some people lived in Nashville. So whenever they were starting a concert tour to get everybody together again, they had to bring all of those people from all those different places. So they had uh, uh, several airplanes. The Colonel had an airplane, they had a turboprop, they had a lot of different planes, and I've never dug into it to know all of those pieces, but I know that those things are um, out there. You know, I know that they had several airplanes. Mika says, I couldn't out-talk Steve. <laughs> yeah, John Farr said that the 880 couldn't make that trek, and I didn't think it could but I didn't want to speak out of turn and say, absolutely it wouldn't. Oh, kibitz means to chit chat. Well, it, <clears throat> I guess indeed I do. Oh, it's a Jewish term. And he's saying that they were so wrapped up at that time with the Osmonds and David Cassidy and the Jackson five. That's what the guitar man is saying. He was down the pecking order. And that's and that's a, a valid point. You know, people don't want to to accept that. You know, um, Elvis was getting ready to be up against. If he'd have lived, he would have been up against some some pretty heavy hitters. Um, not that that I think that they could outshine him because I'm an Elvis fan, but everybody's not an Elvis fan. And in order to make something like that worthwhile, you got to be able to sell tickets. Um, and as many people have said before, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, we could sit here and judge what the Colonel did and didn't do, um, all day long. But the reality is, is here we are 42 years later talking about a guy that the Colonel more or less made famous. So the Colonel did something absolutely right. And I doubt many of you know who Michael Jackson's manager or Prince's manager or I could go on and on and on. I know some of them's managers, but very few of them do we know. But Elvis's manager, when I thought, before I started doing this and started really getting into the Elvis world, I, in my mind, Elvis and the Colonel were 50-50 team. It was an equal, an equal deal. 
That's just the way I looked at it. Somebody said, well, I thought I saw, what is this thing jump, y'all? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go in a minute. I'm getting old and tired. Sarah Biskin, of course, he knew he didn't care. I, I, I didn't catch your question, Sarah. Yeah, we talked about Presswick earlier, Richard. Yeah, well, Guitar Man, I appreciate that info. You know, I've interviewed some people from over there, and most of them said there simply wasn't anywhere to play at the time. There just wasn't that many places, and it wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have probably have worked. Have you got a favorite book on Elvis? Uh, at this point, um, I like the Grelnick books, of course. <coughs> I'm going to get a loss in y'all. I'm sorry. It's this, this coronavirus is, is getting me. Um, uh, the... Careless Love and Last Train to Memphis, I think, are very, very well done. I think they're factual about 98%. Um, and it's just like anything, and I don't mean that in a – that's not a swipe to Gorelnik. I think he did a great job on the books. But what – and I think uh, Trey and Ashley would both concur with this. We – you do a video and you think that you've got it all nailed down. And then after that video, you find out this one little thing that's just not quite right in the video. And sometimes we intentionally put, you know, early on we were doing, I thought it would be fun to put Easter eggs in a, in a video. Um, so real hardcore Elvis fans that are all about the details could look at it and go, well, that did, you know, and it would be little minor things like a date or something. Um, but uh, people, it just didn't seem to catch on. So um, every now and again, we'll stick something in there that, you know, I think I'm a comedian, so I'll try to put things in that I think are funny to just mess with people. But uh, my point is this, uh, and even Angie Marchese said this. She said, you know, I learn something every day. And I think that's absolutely accurate. There's no way to create a work like a video and um, or a book or anything like that and everything be 100% accurate because sometimes it's perspective. Sometimes somebody tells you something that you put in a video that you find out is not accurate. So all those different things can happen. Um, but what we try to do is learn from those things and move forward. And Ashley says happens sometimes and I kick myself and I do too, but there's just no way. And <laughs> Ashley Drew says she doesn't have to wait long for somebody to correct her. She's exactly right because you guys are sharp. Y'all know what's going on. And, um, the, um, The thing is, is we are doing our absolute best. We don't take this lightly. We want it to be 100% accurate. But there's just times when it's just not. So what we do is moving forward, we find out something new. And then we will correct it. In the Unfortunately, we can't go back uh, and, and change a video. Once a video is published, that's it. There's nothing that you can do to change it. I wish you could. Um, somebody was asking if I had been to James Dean's crash site. I have not, but Ashley has. She has a video about it. And I do plan on going at some point. And Kenneth says he's a rebel wit of calls. I like how you did wit. I didn't realize that, Manly. Uh, he says he made intentional... Edits. I don't know how you can do a biography and then and then make intentional edits. 
but there's there's only a handful of things I've I've read the book uh, Last Train to Memphis and um, uh, Careless Love, and there's only a handful of things that you know I would say less than two percent that are not accurate. Other than that, it's absolutely one hundred percent accurate. Thank you, nothing. <laughs> Sue, my wife is not an Elvis fan at all. If you watch the video where we're at Lauderdale, she is mad because we're um, <laughs> we're <laughs> because we're staying in Elvis's bedroom and not staying at the pyramid. Um, she likes a five star hotel, which I understand. And but I wanted to stay in Elvis's bedroom and she was mad <laughs> because we were there. But you know what? She the thing is, is she she puts up with my craziness has for a long time. We've been married for uh, this past February is 33 years. And we dated five years before we got married. So we've been together for 38 years and she has tolerated a lot of crap for me. So um, she puts up with this for for all of us. Um, and it's not that she, and don't get me wrong, V, it's not that she doesn't like Elvis. There's a very big difference between, um, being an Elvis fan and liking Elvis. Do I think Jerry Schilling wrote the best book? I do not. And I'm not, that's not a swipe on Jerry's book at all. Um, asking me, it's like, what's the best Elvis song? I mean, they're all great. Yeah, Bardall's books good. Shirley Connell's books. I mean, they're all great books out there. I'm not. I'm not kicking any, but I'm just saying, if you were an Elvis fan that didn't know anything, the Gorelnik books are the right ones to start with, in my opinion. And Rose Clayton's book is good. Uh, I know Rose Clayton. Um, yeah, Ellen. That's that's what I have to do. I have to uh, to take her to five stars other times, but she didn't watch the video. She's, she doesn't, she didn't hold back. She doesn't want to be there. <laughs> oh, that is funny stuff. Well, Mary Rook's book, if you were lucky enough to read it, those things are going for crazy money now. Lori is a very patient person. And Stephen, I have not read that book. There's so many books, y'all. That's one thing is Ashley reads a lot. Uh, Trey reads a lot. Uh, Sally reads a lot. So I've got people that, that read a lot. I haven't read every book. Like I told you, I know Elvis stuff that I've studied. I don't know every single thing, Elvis. I would not purport myself to be an Elvis expert by any, I'm an Elvis historian is, is what I would call myself, but I'm a, I'm a historian. I know a lot about a lot of other, um, history. Um, Steve, I have, uh, Steve and I've talked to Judy West recently. She has agreed to an interview, but she's been so sick. It's not happened yet. Uh, V I will interview Linda at some point. Yeah, you're right. There was a, a big power outage and, uh, and my wife did not care for that. He's asking if Ashley has a podcast, uh, to my knowledge, she does not. We are, I'm working on a podcast that I'll actually will be involved in. And, uh, so, those things are coming up in the future, but this is really kind of a podcast right here. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Yeah, well, it was a terrible, you're, you're right, Gary. Y'all did watch this video. It was a terrible storm that came up. The power was out in Memphis starting that night for about a week. 
Stephen, I have never contacted anybody in Red's family, uh, but I, I plan to at some point. I would love to. I think, you know, you 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 and I have talked about that before. John, are you talking about the the video at Lauderdale? I think that's what you're talking about. If you just put Lauderdale and Spa Guy in, it'll pull it up. And there's actually two, I think. I think there's one on the other channel, a long version and a short version. Yeah, that Nancy Rooks book is very, very hard to find and very expensive. Tom, Lamar, if he had children, I'm not aware of it, but he was married to uh, um, Janice Fadal. Eddie Fadal's daughter, the one that has the the Airbnb in Waco that Elvis stayed at. And I've interviewed Janice and her brother that, and those videos, those inter interviews will be coming up. Larry, I did not talk to anybody in the Colonel's family personally, but I did interview a guy in Holland in the Netherlands that knew the Colonel's sister and her daughter. And he even, he was so much of a Colonel fan that he tried to get a street in Breda Holland changed to uh, Colonel Tom Parker street or Avenue or drive and couldn't get it done, but he really pushed for it. Sarah, uh, actually Sarah Bis Bish Bishkin is saying she wants to talk to you just a uh, friend her or, um, on, uh, well, you can't do that on Facebook. Um, you can ask questions on YouTube. And when is the next time you're gonna you're gonna go live, Ashley? Ashley Drew Adventures at Gmail, Sarah. dot com. Matt answered the MBE question. And it's, it's Munchausen by Elvis or Munchausen by Elvis. He's calling it Elvis derangement syndrome, which doesn't sound quite as nice, but more or less the same thing. That's people. Munchausen is a person that, that pretends that they're sick or uh, for attention or money. Munchausen by proxy is someone that pretends that someone else is sick, like a child or a family member for attention or money. Munchausen by Elvis, MBE, is someone that pretends like they were more involved in the Elvis story than they really were. And there can be many levels of that. And what I mean is, it could be somebody that just tells a little, little tiny, slight little fib, or it could be somebody that makes up this whole elaborate story of things that absolutely never happened. And it can be a person that never, never knew Elvis and, or it could be a person that did know Elvis. That was, that was actually a, what we would call an insider that um, is, is just simply fabricating stuff. And it's more rampant than you would like for it to be. But the reason that I call it MBE is so the people that watch me, when I say it, they know what I'm talking about. And, uh, uh, and the person that I'm saying it about doesn't know. Does that make sense? V Phil says he's a big fan of you, Ashley Drew, and I am as well. I think you should do it twice a week, Ashley. Stuart Ellis from London. There's your shout out there, brother. Did I ever talk to Scotty about him not being a fan of the Colonel? If he was not a fan of the Colonel, I don't recall it. But now, I, well, Scotty and I didn't really talk much after about 2003. That's been a long, long time ago. And Michael, my drone flight, thank you, brother. And man, it's, it's horrible. Those poor people that, uh, that, that had all that. Kimberly Davis knows what I'm talking about with MBE. 
And Kimberly, I hope I'm not um, uh, um, aggra- We need to talk about that maybe one day. Let's just say that. I don't want you to feel bad about me talking about that. Let me just say. It's saying that Nancy's book is available on Kindle. I did not know that. Because the hard copy is like 600 bucks or something crazy like that. Oh, I see that. Now, oh, now I would agree with that. But I, uh, Scotty, the two, the two things that Scotty, and look, they've, I filmed a lot of stuff about Scotty because I knew him. In fact, after Scotty died, I went to his house and stood out in front of his house and set my camera up and told Scotty stories. Um, but I've never put any of that stuff out. Um, because I'm actually looking for, I've got so much stuff, y'all. I cannot find all of my Scotty stuff. And so I'm waiting until I find all my pieces so I can properly tell that story. But Scotty told me that he was upset because Elvis never bought him a car and his wife, Bobby, her car was brand new. It was a four door Chevrolet 50. What was it? A 53 or 50 might've been a 54 model. Um, they put a hundred thousand miles on it and they never got paid for the hundred thousand miles. So they basically wore Bobby's car out and never paid her for it and never replaced the car. And he just, he, you know, he did say that to me, but he didn't blame the Colonel. He said, I don't understand why Elvis, now he didn't, to me, he didn't blame the Colonel. Um, um, Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about, Tom. He definitely was upset about that. And I actually interviewed Bobby. I've never put that out. So, man, y'all are going to be after me now that you found out I have all this stuff. Uh, I went and found Bobby. She's still alive. She was 87. and But she did not want to be on camera. If she was on camera, I'd already put it out. But all I have is the audio. And she did not, I mean, the camera was running, but she didn't want me to point it at her. And I just think that doesn't make very compelling video. So uh, I probably need to put it out anyhow so we can all just hear it and and hear her side of it. But she talks about the day. Um, uh, you're right, Ashley. It's Mary Jenkins' book. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm saying uh, the other book, but it's Mary. You're exactly right. That's the one that goes for like 600 bucks. Um, But the uh, uh, yeah, Ronnie did buy Scotty a car, um, and he actually left that car up there at the gas station in in Portland. Um, I didn't know Ronnie at that time, but I knew Scotty. And the Zip and Pip and Gary S. Last Elvis, last public appearance. The coaster is alive and well in Green Bay. Man, I hate to break the news to you, but that coaster, other than it being the exact uh, replica of the other coaster, has nothing to do with the coaster that was in uh, Liberty Land. What they did was they built, they, they were going to move the coaster. Uh, my friend, Stephen Schutz, y'all have seen Stephen Schutz videos. And by the way, you can look him up, Rockology. He's, he does some Elvis videos as well. Um, uh, Steven actually bought that roller coaster. He paid for it. He owned it. And then didn't have enough money to move it. And so what he did was sold the name and the, the shape of it to those people that built the roller coaster up there. But there's nothing there with that roller coaster um, that... Uh, has anything to do with the roller coaster in Green Bay. The car to the roller coaster, the actual front car to the real Zip and Pippin, is in a private collection in Memphis. Uh, v Phil MMK is doing good. He had a motorcycle accident and got scraped up pretty good. 
but uh, we saw him two weekends ago, or it may have been three weekends. I think it's two weekends ago. And um, he is is alive and well, doing fine, just just beat up. He got run off the road on his motorcycle and, and got uh, got hurt pretty good. No broken bones or anything, but scraped up really good. Petunia, thank you for uh, – Petunia is, is signing out. We're right at three hours, guys, so I need to let you all go. Jim, thank you so much for, for tuning in, my friend. And look, guys, we'll do this again. I don't know if uh, if we should do it um, once a week or once every other week, but we'll uh, get together and decide how we're going to do this. And we may even, uh, you know, it would be cool to have a guest here, don't you think? So maybe we can do something like that and um, – but this has been fun. Uh, it's, I'll be honest with you. I told Trey before I started, man, I'm a little nervous about this because this is way out of my wheelhouse. I'm used to taking a camera and filming uh, uh, things that are that other things. And you you rarely see me and, and because the story is not about me. And so I don't feel like that, you know, I want you to feel like you're with me. Um, I don't want you to feel like, um, that uh, thank y'all so much. <laughs> I'm I'm talking. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> Three hours is a long time. But thank y'all so much for tuning in. Y'all rock. Tighten up every chance you get. And um, I hope that that you've learned some more about who the spa guy is and what we're doing and why we're doing it. Thank y'all for the people that donated. Um, as I mentioned, don't feel compelled to donate, but if you're interested in helping us to be able to grab as much history as we can grab, please do that. And um, we've got some big things coming up, friends, things that I can't wait to tell you, but I can't tell you until it's time. And so make sure that you um, just follow along. I'm trying to put things now when I post a video, which I told you, even if I don't do one, a new one, I'm going to try to post something every day. I'll post it on YouTube, which I learned from Ashley I could do, just like I learned I could do this. I post it on my Facebook page, Billy the Spa Guy. I also face, paste it on the spa guy YouTuber, which I had to start a fan page because my page, I have 5,000 friends. I can't have any more. And then I also tweet, tweet it. I put it on Twitter. So I put it in four places. So you can keep up with me in all those different places. And I do thank y'all so much. And a lot of y'all have really stuck with us. We have um, 380 people and we're three hours in. That is incredible. And to answer your question on Patreon, Heather, I don't know yet. But once I know, I will make y'all aware of it. And I just know that a lot of YouTubers, that's one of the ways that they that they basically uh, finance their, their adventures. And um, I just appreciate y'all and Ashley appreciates y'all and Trey does and all the other people, Tennessee Ted and, you know, we've got a cast of characters now. Um, Patrick that y'all just saw. I hope y'all enjoyed seeing Patrick. Make sure you, uh, when you get off of this, make sure that you, if you are not um, subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And what Ashley said last night is right. They should change it to follow instead of subscribe. And Elvis fans do indeed rock. And I thank y'all so much for, for coming out and staying so long. And we are going to end it with this. And as I mentioned, tighten up every chance you get. Thank y'all so much.